Man, no freaking big deal, huh? Gosh. Yeah, so um, let's slate that sucker out, <laughs> mark a new beginning, and we're just going to trim that off. So for you folks that are live, um, you're going to have some, you know, you're going to get some backstage footage that you'll never see in the final version. This is David Wilcock. Uh, we have never used this live streaming setup before. This is the first time we're doing it. Uh, and wow, what an incredible turn of events we have had in society. Um, I get it. Let me just start with that. And Beth, why don't we go to the close here in the middle? That's, that's the green one. You got to hit the red one. Top button. Above that. No. <laughs> All right. That's the one I want. We literally have just been learning. She hasn't even really learned how to use this rig yet, so we're, we're just kind of building the plane as we fly it, as they say in the military. <sighs> All right. We got it. We got sound. We got video. Let's just take a deep breath now that we're here. <sighs> Try to relax a little bit. <sighs> All right. I get how intense this is. I do. I do not believe this is the end of the world. I don't. You can think I'm crazy. You can laugh through the whole video if you want to. That's okay. It's okay if you laugh. It's okay if you think that this is going to be... Uh, that's my dog. He appears to be choking on a bone fragment because we're getting maximum negative greeting here. Just. Give her a snack or something. Yeah, so our dog starts choking right as we go live. That's another function of this. I am going to have some fun, and I'll say that uh, laughter will boost your immune system. <laughs> so that's the nature that I have. You know, Even if this was something that we're not going to come back from, which I very strongly doubt, I still wouldn't be all doom and gloom with you. Um, and I encourage you, actually, in the shamanic teaching sense of the word, to look at the fact, like I do, you know, having fought against this deep state since 2007, having really put my name out there, not as an Anon, not as a, as a uh, person who doesn't go public with anything about themselves. I've been public. This is something I've been telling you for 11 years. What have I been saying for 11 years? Make sure you have food and water at home. And we were saying two weeks, it's probably going to be longer than that, but let's just start with some very grounded stuff. It was January 22nd that they first announced COVID-19 shutting down China. It was January 23rd of 2020 that they actually shut China down, starting with the Wuhan province, of course. And now China is back up to 95% capacity less than three months later, and there are no new COVID-19 cases. So that's three months, okay? Now, China had it a lot worse than anybody else has. There's a lot of strange disinformation going on in the media right now. This is a very fearful moment. Now, I again do not believe that this is the end of the world. I believe that what we are seeing is part of a, an overall transformative process. Now, what do I think is going on? Let's just hit the ground running here. I do believe that this is not a random thing. I do believe this virus was man-made, that it's not natural, and there's a lot of evidence. In fact, several countries are now making that accusation, so this is not fake news. These are credible countries with multi-billion dollar GDPs who are making those kinds of statements now, okay? So that's a big, big part of this. <sighs> Do I think that this virus is going to kill everybody? No. It has a 1% mortality rate. There was a lot of intel coming out on, for example, Benjamin Fulford's blog back in January that this was a so-called designer virus, meaning that the virus is what they call ethno-specific. Now, what does that mean? That means that it's designed by someone and it targets certain ethnicities. 
in this case, Asians. Now that's not a good thing. I'm not saying that you should be happy about this. I'm not saying you should be afraid of this. But what I am saying is that it's not just internet conspiracy theory. It's not tinfoil hat nonsense. It's not paranoid. It's actually what China has accused the US of directly. And I believe also Russia and Iran have jumped in and said the same kinds of things. Now, I might be wrong on those countries, but I know Iran is one of them. I think Russia was another one. There's a few. OK, now. If that's true, there's a couple other things that I got from briefings that I want to share with you. First of all, the Wuhan province, where it was so much worse than it's been anywhere else, those people, first of all, number one, they all use public drinking water fountains, meaning that they're walking up to a place in public where they have a water fountain that they can put their hands on, they can sneeze on it, they can cough on it, and they're drinking water out of it, and everybody's going to these. And literally, everybody uses these. You're just walking down the street, and you get a drink of water off of the water fountain. You're touching the button that other people touched, and then you rub your nose. The, the water comes out of it. You're drinking some of this stuff. Now, what we also know is that in the Wuhan province where this happened, that there is a serious problem with heavy-duty air pollution. And this is a virus that gets in through your lungs. Now, they have said that it was similar to SARS and to avian flu. Now, we've already had briefings going back many years that those were apparently ethnospecific viruses targeted to Asians. Isn't it also strange that at the same time that this was happening, and this is documented, that China was already going through viruses that attack their poultry supply and their pork supply? So. If it's an Asian ethno-specific virus, what does that mean exactly? That means that it's designed for people in, these, in this area with three things going on. Number one, public water fountains. Number two, severe air pollution. And number three, the majority of people in the Wuhan province of China and in China in general are heavy cigarette smokers. So what we're seeing is a higher rate of, in, of you know, complications and possibly mortality. But again, the mortality rates on this really don't add up. When I looked up the number of Americans who have died of coronavirus 19, it's like it was at 30 for a long time. And now it, the last I saw it was up to like 71. So if you think about it, it doesn't make sense that society would continue to be shut down indefinitely to save a very, very small number of people. Now, that's where it gets crazy you're not going to have society stay shut down to stop something that even in the conventional estimates, it's a 1% mortality rate, but that 1% might be based upon the idea, it is, it's, it's, it's metered off of Wuhan. So if, as these countries are suggesting, this is, this is a, a targeted virus against Asians, okay? then the mortality rates for non-Asians are going to be a lot lower. And apparently some of the briefings we got is that there's a certain type of structure in Asian people's lungs that's different than everybody else's from other races. And so it targets that. Now, I don't know how that works, uh, but I am going to share that with you just because I'm not trying to spread fake news. I don't know if this is true. It's just some of the rumors that we're hearing. But if it's true, it might mean that the actual mortality rate for everybody else is even a lot less than 1%. And I remember looking at the statistics from Italy and calculating the number of deaths as opposed to the population, which is 60.48 million, and it comes out to 0.001%. Okay, and that's Italy. And Italy is supposed to be really, really bad. So, it's all fine and good to have the media lying to you about stuff that doesn't really affect your day-to-day -day life. We all, to varying degrees, understand that that could be going on. We have a big six, right? There's these six corporations that are like running the media and all the television channels that you can watch and all the movies that you see and all the television shows you can watch and all the magazines, newspapers, major book publishers, they're all under this umbrella where they have control in one of these six corporations. Whether that's being misused or not is certainly up to debate. If you are 
a supporter of Trump, of the President of the United States, then you probably feel that the media is greatly being abused. If you are not a supporter of Trump, if you strongly dislike him, well then you would probably be in agreement with a lot of what the media has been doing for the last three and a half years now. The media has been on an unprecedented bashing campaign against the President of the United States. We've truly never seen anything like this before. There's no other precedent for this in any recorded history. So, I just want to keep talking to you about this because I think this is important. Um, I really do hope, since I do reach a large audience, that this video will not be taken down by any censors online. Uh, again, this is all for your consideration only. I'm not trying to spread fake news. I'm not trying to mislead you. But I know that a lot of you want to think about what's going on in my head. What am I experiencing? What am I going through? So, number one, let's not be doom and gloom with ourselves and with our families, okay? If the media is spreading a panic that is unrealistic, then it's our job to maintain some kind of a positive attitude, even if we don't really believe it. The adage, fake it till you make it, would be important here. So I don't want you to freak out. I don't want you to be in a morbid place. I, I do want you to practice social distancing. Please, stay home. Don't go outside. Don't think that nothing is going on. The, the people that are going out onto the beaches in Florida for spring break, that's ridiculous. And I do not, I do not approve of that. I am not saying this thing is fake. I am not saying this thing is not dangerous. It is a very dangerous virus. And it is particularly dangerous for people between the ages of 70 to 100, of course. And especially if you're 80 or over, older. The average age of the people that's, that were dying from this, according to one of my insiders yesterday, and I think he got this from regular news sources, was like 76. And you can look at those curves and see that as you get into that age range, that becomes a lot higher. Now, some of my audience is in that age range. So let's talk about a couple practical things. I worked in direct care with developmentally disabled people, and I did this for two years. And I was working in a day treatment residential facility in which some of our clients, or whatever you want to call them, had hepatitis C, which is supposed to be as bad as getting AIDS, okay? Now, you weren't supposed to know who the HEP carriers were, but of course, the uh, treatment coordinators did, and they had these binders, and so I was given names under the table of some of the people that were HEP C carriers. So think about that. We knew in working at this place I was working at that you could get a disease as bad as AIDS just by being around the people you're taking care of, working for two cents above minimum wage, I might add. Five seventy-seven an hour is what I was earning back then, $200 a week. So what did I do? We learned this whole thing called infection control. So for me, this is old hat. When I'm on an airplane, which is not going to happen anytime soon, <laughs> And again, I am going to laugh. I'm going to make some jokes because laughter is going to boost your immune system. So sometimes I'll say some things that are funny. And I think we all need a little levity. I'm seeing that there's some humor online, and I think that's good. So when I'm on an airplane, okay, what do I always do? I wash my hands in the sink thing, even though they say it's not, you know, you can't drink it, right? And then I, I take the towel that I wipe my hands with, and I open the door with the towel. And then I, I open the doorknob with the towel. I push the door open with my elbow, and then I push the towel into the garbage as carefully as I can to try not to let that damn thing touch my hand. And if I, if I do, it's only going to be on the back. Try not to let it touch my hand at all. When I'm opening a door, I open the door with my elbow. If I have to go into a building and you have to pull the door open, I'll hold my sleeve out like this. Okay, I'll put my sleeve over my hand, and then I'll open the door with the, 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 the cloth of my sleeve, okay? I always have done this. Always have done this. Maybe, oh, I'm a germaphobe, I'm a germaphobe, but dude, if you're working with people where you could get something equivalent to AIDS is basically the same thing, and then they wanted me to take the hepatitis B vaccine. Well, my mother got the World Health Organization's sanctioned uh, flu vaccine 1976, and she nearly died from it. 
And a lot of people nearly died from it. Her friend Hope, who lived out in the farms, nearly died from it. Really, really, really sick. After she got the vaccine, there was no problem before she got the vaccine. Apparently there was this thing that aired on CBS or ABC. It only aired once. It's out there now about the investigation about that vaccine and that the vaccine might have caused people to get the flu. Well, my mother definitely believed that. So <laughs> now Beth is laughing. So um, yeah, I grew up with a mother who did not use pharmaceutical medications at all. We, she would uh, drink this nasty stuff called brewer's yeast. And just, it just smelled horrible, but it had B vitamins in it, I guess. I could never understand that. We go to this place called Patton's. It was a drugstore, and she would always have her vitamins. She'd always have all the alphabet vitamins. A, B, C, D, E, and uh, now you also want to get K, K2, all that stuff. Okay. So, Henry Deacon, one of my main insiders who I started to speak to back in 2007, told me, that if people were taking 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 every day, that they don't get sick. Now I wanna stop for a second, give a dramatic pause and say that again. You can get these 5,000 IU vitamin D3 pills, okay? That's the highest that they'll give you. I always take two 5,000 IU vitamin D3 pills a day. Granted, you could get vitamin D from being out in the sun, but most of us don't do enough of that. He was told, and again, there's some credible science for this, that if you take the D3, 10,000 IUs a day, you're not gonna get sick. I probably did have that coronavirus 19, and the only thing that happened to me was that I had to sleep for about a month for like eight and a half hours at night and two hours in the afternoon. Tom Hanks, you heard all this stuff about, oh, Tom Hanks has got it, man. All that happened was that he had some body aches and his wife had some chills and they were tired and that's it. And then they got over it. Okay. Oh, but it's going to like, it's going to like incubate and it's going to come back. But wait a minute. What did I say before? China has now had no new COVID-19 cases in only three months of social distancing. And another thing I really want to point out here. There's already reports coming in, credible mainstream reports that you can hear and read. So again, this is not fake news, that the Chinese have been very effectively kicking this virus's ass with vitamin C. Go figure. So here in the Los Angeles area, we have fruit trees everywhere. We have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to citrus. And I've been eating like six oranges a day. Well, tangerines actually, we have a nice tangerine tree. So vitamin C, vitamin D are probably your most important things. However, I would also recommend getting a vitamin A source. Uh, when I was doing our own panic buying at the grocery store, I got a big old tub of super green powder because in there you get all your vitamin A. You get most of the vitamins. Uh, so if you have those alphabet vitamins lying around the house, I would definitely start taking them. I'd take A, B, C, D, E. E, which is really more just for your skin, but what the hell? Can't hurt, and if you have K, take that too. Those are some of the main things. Hydration is extremely important. You always wanna be drinking enough water. You always want to make sure that you're not thirsty. And even if that means you gotta pee a lot and you're like, man, you know, I don't like all this peeing, well, just do it anyway, because the peeing doesn't matter, okay? Stay inside the house, practice social distancing, don't be closer to anybody than six feet. I'm totally doing that. And okay, she wants me to go over here now, that's fine. My, my wife is acting as my director and that's totally cool. I gotta do something though. <laughs> gotta get something going on. <laughs> How do I want that frame to look? Let's frame this baby up. All right. <sighs> Guys, this is nuts. It's nuts. Now, nutrition, okay, please. One of the things that I've been telling my wife is consistency Consistency, consistency. Haven't I been saying that word like every day? Yes. Yeah. Consistency, what does that mean? That means do the same stuff that you always do, okay? Within, get a routine, okay? I want you to go to bed at the normal hour. I don't want you staying up late at night. And I want you to get up at the normal hour and I want you to let yourself sleep as much as possible. 
If you only usually get five or six hours, you are more vulnerable. If you can sleep more, if you don't have to set your alarm, if you don't have to go to work right now, then just sleep in. I have a dog, uh, Shepherd Mix, and she really, really wants that schedule. She, everything's got to happen right on time, and that, that's helpful. I have been going outside. I have been walking my dog outside. There's no cars on the road, like hardly any. And yet, the sun is bright, and the breeze is nice, and it's been raining and raining and raining and raining in California like you can't imagine, which also is curious. All these things, to me, are not just meaningless, inconsistent pieces of data. Now, Beth, let me just ask, is everybody happy with the show so far? Are we getting any complaints or any problems or anything? Well, um, I think you can get into the meat of it, you know? Okay. Well, I want to be, I want to start light, okay? I want to start and be pragmatic so that nobody can come out and fire shots at me. I, I know the risk that I'm under, believe me. I have been sort of hiding out from very intense attacks over the last year, more than a year, from our loyal opposition. I have been exposing this deep state Illuminati cabal ever since 2007. It has gotten to be a red hot war with, as I told you guys on February 23rd of last year, on YouTube there were 5.9 million unique titles that had my name in the title, and that's not a name you see anywhere else except unless it's me. I mean, there's some British dude named David Wilcock, and he took davidwilcock.com, and he just uses it as his e email. I'd love to buy him out, but I don't know. He's never even wanted to take the offer. So <laughs> I don't have davidwilcock.com, but if you see David Wilcock online, it's me, okay? 5.9 million videos. After I made that announcement, which by the way included the fact that that was twice the number of videos as Hillary Clinton had, and it was comparable with Barack Obama and major, major political figures like that, like George W. Bush, well, there's also, as I said, you know, Dude Perfect, these guys who literally bounce balls, and that's the show, they bounce balls, they've got like 40 million uh, videos with that, with that term in the title. So. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. YouTube was its own little ecosystem. And then after I made that announcement, two days later, they knocked it down to 250,000. How the hell did they make 5.75 million videos disappear in a couple of days? I don't really know, but it did happen, and I proved it. Okay, oh. So. Oh, David's such a narcissist. He's got such a big ego. Man, you're just, you just wanking on the camera. Okay, look. I'm not saying that this is something that I'm, I'm trying to pump myself up for. I'm simply saying it's true, okay? Imagine if that was you. Imagine if you had this happen to you. Imagine if you had twice as many videos on YouTube as Hillary Clinton, and then you tell everybody, and then two days later, they're all gone. Just like that. Bang! It's intense, okay? Colleagues start turning on you left and right making up lies that you know are false, but you don't want to hurt their reputation, so you don't say anything. You leave it alone. And all the people start figuring out what the lies are, but you just don't get into it. And that's, that's how I handle this stuff, okay? Former colleagues conspiring against me and literally trying to inspire people to get me killed. That has been my reality since last May. People that I used to work with, people who I laughed with, people who I sat with and worked with, literally trying to get me killed. Creating videos and bringing people on who are sneering and laughing and snickering about the fact that they want me dead. And then conspiring to make that happen at Contact in the Desert. To such an extent that we had to hire all these security guards. They were not armed, but they were on site, ready to do whatever needed to be done to protect us. We heard reports that they wanted to throw eggs or glass bottles at me from the audience, and therefore I could not turn my back to my own audience. And I did get heckled on stage during my panel, and my wife got heckled on stage during the panel. Well, not on stage, but close enough. This was very upsetting. To have what actually is a satanic cult, when you actually find out what these people are saying in their videos, 
the types of alignments that they have, the types of costumes they dress up in, the things that they're saying and doing, it's really upsetting, folks. And that's why we now have a full-time attorney on retainer. And all we're doing is compiling this information, observing everybody that's doing this, putting it together, and when necessary, taking legal action. And there were certain things that were going to drop, which we couldn't drop because now the legal system is all screwed up. But that was about to happen, and I'm not going to get into more detail. But I want to be clear on this. We do stand for peace. We are not going to randomly single people out. You have to do a lot of stuff that's really bad for us to come after you. But if you get a cease and desist letter from us, you better believe we're going to take it all the way. If you get a cease and desist letter that is not a joke, you are not to go online and joke about it, that means that you are threatening us and we are going to take it further. Okay? So, you want to know why I haven't been so active? Because I wanted to see what would happen if I just stopped talking. All these people, where their whole life is making up stuff about me every day, making up these horrendous lies, that I'm cheating on my wife, which is not true. We don't have a life. We're always around each other. All this crazy stuff, all these lies. This is what my life has been like. So I do apologize, folks, for why I haven't been more active. I built this whole setup for you, knowing that there would be a time where I wanted to use it, where I wanted to go public, because something was going to happen. Because I've been telling you for 11 years that you're going to have to have, you know, stored food and water. And you're going to have to be in your house, and you're not going to want to or be able to leave the house for a period of time. We thought it was two weeks. Given what's happening now, it might be longer than that. But I want you to understand that the opposition is real. I want you to understand that these people are an extreme minority. They think they have a lot of followers and numbers because the following that we have is so big that even if you can rope in 1% of my audience by hating me, it'll appear to be large. But, okay, she's giving me the cut sign. That's fine. I've said enough on that. I do apologize, but we built this and now we're using it and it looks like everything's working. It's live, it's online. I do have a slideshow. I was hoping that we could use this slideshow um, and I got to check this laptop real quick and see if it's going to work. But before that, let me just hit you with a couple other things. Again, not trying to spread fake news, not interested in, you, you know, Yugle. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> YouTube or Google or Alphabet or whatever they want to call themselves taking this down. Please don't. Uh, let my audience hear what I have to say. Censorship is not cool. If you guys, if there is an entity, a force, a group that did this, okay? You got what you wanted, you released it. It's doing what you wanted it to do. Please let us speak to each other. Please do not censor us. That is ridiculous, okay? At this point, it's ridiculous. Let us talk. I'm telling people to stay home. I'm telling people to wash their hands, take vitamins, which is always a smart move, and just try to be calm, okay? Because I don't think this is the end of the world. And I have an enormous amount of evidence for this, okay? I don't know if the slideshow is going to work today, but I will summarize what I have in it. And if it doesn't work today, then we will definitely do another one of these. We have one scheduled for Sunday, and I'll do it then, maybe even sooner. I don't know. And I should practice hydration and drink some water, so just let me do that for a second. You can cut over to this mm -hmm. angle, I guess. <laughs> the dramatic pause. And I can assure you that this water is, uh, you know, very clean. There's no germs in it, as far as I can tell. And it's good to keep drinking water. All right. So let's get into some stuff, okay? Number one. You know, I wrote these books. And they're not, uh, they're not bad. This, this has over a thousand academic references in it. Let's, let's go over to the wide, uh, tight shot again here, camera two. This is source field investigations. It's a monster. Okay, this is 500 plus pages. What did I do in here? If you go to the back where the bibliography is, there's over a thousand references in here. And what is the point that I'm making in source field? The point that I'm making in source field is that we live in a sentient conscious universe with over a thousand scientific references from credentialed PhDs. 
I'm not trying to sell it to you. I don't know if you'd even be able to order it anyway, okay? But the point is, what does this tell us? It tells us, for example, there is the science of a Russian guy named Kaznachiev. K-A-Z-N-A-C-H-E-E-V. Kaznachiev discovered that he could remotely transfer viruses to a hermetically sealed cell culture with energy. Okay, now that seems really radical, but it's just part of the DNA science that shows that ordinary tissue can be reorganized by energetic fields into other things. And you've probably heard me talk about this for many years. Let me put this down now. One of the, my favorite ones, you know, without the germy, nasty stuff, one of my favorite ones, and let's go back over here now. One of my favorite ones is the frog salamander experiment, right? You've probably heard me talk about that before, in which eggs that are laid by a salamander are zapped with a laser that's a green laser, and then the laser photons apparently pick up the genetic signature. There is a photonic aspect to DNA. A single photon apparently can store the genetic signature of DNA. And then that DNA is remotely transferred into another cell culture, which in this case is the eggs laid by a frog. And it's only the DNA is transferred by light, okay? However, what happens is that the frog eggs grow into adult salamanders. This was discovered by Dr. Peter Garyayev. And again, this is totally live. You know, I'm just doing this off the top of my head right now because I don't know if our slides are going to work. Hopefully they will. Garyayev said that salamander DNA could be transferred energetically through photons of light to frog eggs, and the frogs then do not grow into frogs, they grow into salamanders. This has also been done by other scientists, such as a Korean scientist named Zhang Kangeng, where he was able to take duck uh, DNA and, and then zap it into chicken eggs, and the chicken eggs hatched into half-duck, half-chicken hybrid creatures. And he replicated this over and over again. Then there's another guy in Italy named Pierre Luigi Ighina, and he did the same thing. And he was able, for example, to zap cat DNA into the tail of a rat, and the rat tail started to grow cat-like hair and grow longer before it died. He also was able to take uh, peach DNA and zap it into an apple tree, and the fruits actually started turning into apple-peach hybrids. So this is one of these weird things that also shows up in the historical record, in the fossil record, where you have every 26 million years or so, a sudden change in the life on Earth. And actually, when you dial it down, it appears to be more like a 25 million year cycle, or 24.8, okay? Every, so let's just use that figure, which I think is what it'll be when it's perfected. This was Dr. Uh, David Raup and James Sepkoski from the University of Chicago. They're two paleontologists. And what they found was that they're looking at the greatest collection of marine fossils ever compiled, which they had over 3,300 different genres of life, all this stuff. And they can see when the life is formed. And every 24.8 million years, everything suddenly is evolving into a new form of life. And it's cyclical. And they wondered if it was some kind of uh, nemesis thing. They thought there was a rogue planet, but it doesn't make any sense. What does make sense is that it is some kind of cycle, some kind of cyclical change that activates DNA. In other words, Darwinian evolution isn't really right. It's, it's true up to a point because we do see species progressively evolving, but these evolutionary bursts do not happen over long, gradual periods of time. They happen in sudden spurts. When they have tried to, for example, use fruit flies and mutate them with radiation, which supposedly mutations cause evolution, they don't get any, any better versions of fruit flies. So the mutation causing evolution thing doesn't really hold up under scientific scrutiny. It appears that there is a hidden force in biology that we do not know about. And I have argued that it has been deliberately suppressed. Why? Because when you understand how life really works, there is a spiritual component to it. It's no longer an animistic, uh, 
you know, ter deterministic Cartesian universe where everything is materialistically based. There is an energetic component to life. Now, why do I say that? Because viruses also have an energetic component. Some of the briefings that I got have suggested that this virus was deliberately engineered and that the people who did it are disappointed because it's much less effective than they thought it was going to be. They expected that this thing was going to kill a lot more people than it has. Now that's a briefing, I don't know if it's true, but it certainly came from reliable sources. So I do believe that we have the power to energetically change the structure of this virus because we know that this science is true. I've d documented it all, right? So for that same reason, through the power of prayer, we can change the outcome. We can reduce the lethality of this virus, reduce the spread of this virus, and by being practical, staying in the house, all of these things. Because there are very credible scientific studies showing that our consciousness affects DNA. My favorite, of course, is the work of Dr. Glenn Rhine, who as a DNA scientist has shown that he can send love to DNA and it actually heals the DNA molecule, which he measures by how much light it holds onto, in this case, ultraviolet light, okay? DNA stores ultraviolet photons, 260 nanometers. And if you send love to the DNA, it starts holding a lot more of this light, which he can count one photon at a time. And although he didn't really do a full study on this and we've talked about making it that way, but he hasn't done it yet, he found that when people got angry that it actually destroyed DNA and it made DNA break. Now you've heard about the placebo effect, right? You've heard about the fact that people get these drugs that don't do anything. It's a sugar pill, but they believe, ah, oh, man, this is like really good stuff. This is going to heal you. And then they take it. And if they believe that story, it actually heals them. There are certain drugs now that could not pass the stage three trials to be approved as pharmaceutical medications because placebos work just as well. And yet they're, they're being used now because people don't know that. And it was done before this placebo effect got to be more powerful. What does that mean? That means we are creators. That means our minds are powerful. So please think about what I'm saying. If you are in a state of negativity, if you are in a state of anger, depression, sadness, fear, then you are actually breaking open the DNA in your body and the bodies of those around you. You're decreasing your immunity. You can get a lot sicker if you are not happy, if you're angry, if you're stressed out, if you're raising your voice, if you're crying and sad. And I, certainly, you know, some cathartic release is okay. If that's what you need to do to feel better right now, I totally get it, okay? But what I would really advocate for is that you try to breathe, you try to meditate, and you try to relax. Because this is really, look, they're not going to shut down society and kill everybody to save the 1% who would have died from this thing if we didn't do that. 1% of people on earth is a hell of a lot. It's a horrific number, okay? That's true. 20,000 people this year have already died from the regular flu, which is a lot less than COVID-19, and COVID-19 is way the hell worse than the flu by about 10 times. But Still, it's only 1%. So please understand, they're not going to shut society down and let everybody die to save 1% of the population. And if they did, then there would be a problem. But that's not what this is. That's not what's going on. Okay, that was an important thing I wanted to get out there, but there's a lot more. Let's, let's see if the slides will work. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's just hold on for one second, everybody. Sorry. Let's see if I can get this to happen. We are live and, oh, it is going to work. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. I know, this is like serious high tech here. All right, well, I'm going to keep talking and you can look at my lovely room. And uh, I'm just going to keep spewing all this stuff for you, talking and talking. Uh, yeah, I don't need to worry about that. Okay. The computer was shut down because of a problem that we definitely know. All right. And yeah, yeah, there's some stuff we can do here. I want to remotely transfer. 
I want to transfer this file that I have by the lovely, lovely airdrop. In fact, let's uh, put it on that one. Put it on the one that's green there. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the lovely airdrop, which is my favorite trick on the, on the Mac. It's a wonderful feature. And hopefully the other computer will show up here. You guys having fun? Is this like better than just sitting around bored and watching a whole bunch of BS? I hope so. Uh, I hope I'm entertaining you at least, and maybe you're getting something out of this besides just boredom. Uh, and I, gotta, I have a very, very tight depth of field here, so I have to be super careful about where I'm standing or it's just not going to work. All right. Um, it's not wanting to airdrop yet, but there's lots and lots of ways we can work around that. We could get an SD card. Yeah, but I'm gonna. I want to do the slides. So uh, let's just let's just try to see if I can get this to happen. Hold on, folks. All right. If I just stop talking, I can think a little more, and I can make sure that this works. All right. Let me close the file. That will probably help. And let's try to airdrop it again. This one thousand people, Ron. That's not bad. <laughs> Eighteen thousand people who think that uh, I might have something worth listening to. I appreciate that, you guys. Thank you. All right, is it gonna do it? Let's see. Hold on. Oh, I see what's happening here. I see what's going on here, folks. Hold on one second. Yeah, this, is, this, this slideshow is going to blow your doors off, so just hang in there. It's totally, totally worth it for me to be doing this, believe me. <laughs> I am not tooting my own horn either. I mean, this is, uh, there's a lot going on here, so. I mean, literally, guys, I've been working on this slideshow for so, so long you know, right up until the moment, I just, I just said, you know what, I've got to create a deadline for myself and really make this thing happen and uh, get it out there because that's the only way that we're ever going to actually do the show. We've got to, like, just literally get this thing out there and damn the torpedoes full speed ahead. All right, so all this stuff has got to happen. And... Uh, Let's see here, airdrop, we turn that on. All right, now, there we go. All right. We're gonna share it. Boy, this is fun, huh? Watching me do a whole bunch of nothing. This is like riveting television. Okay, Beth, if you don't mind, um, if you could load this, the, the pandemic response file onto an SD card and then put it into that computer. What's that? Not that's not an SD card. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, you, just... you know those little square things we got? Yes. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to get this done. All right. So, um... Yeah, and we, yeah, just take that take that HDMI cable out because that's not we don't need that anymore. We just need you to find one of those cards from wherever doesn't matter. Okay, so um, before we go into this, I want to be clear in case you haven't watched this stuff before, where I'm coming from, because uh, you're about to get a major major download. I've been working on this thing nonstop for so many hours. There's so much research has gone into this. So. The deep state, the Illuminati, the cabal, the New World Order, it's real, okay? And I have learned a lot about this ever since I started to read books on it in the mid-1990s. Um, as I've said so many times, there was a class that I had in college. It was a sociology class, and we had a textbook called Crisis in American Institutions. Now, the purpose of this sociology class was to teach us about, if you will, government conspiracies. 
And there are some really great books that are out there. Uh, in fact, I have one of them right over here, so just stand by one second. I'll show you a couple examples because I know right where they are. You should be able to still hear me, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to grab these books. This is one of them right here. Boom, I got that one. Okay, and then there's another one right here, which is very important. And I'll grab that one. Okay, and then there's another one. Okay, and I think that's all of them. All right, yeah. I think those are the main ones that I need to have. Okay. I want to show you guys this stuff so you see where I'm coming from, okay? This is the first one I want to show you, and I'll, I'll go to the tight shot again here. This is Anthony C. Sutton, okay? And this book is called Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler. There, now it's in focus. Now, Wall Street and the Rise of Hitler, what the hell is that? It's the idea, this is a sociologist, Anthony Sutton, very credible sociologist, who showed that the Nazis were actually financed by Wall Street. Now here's another book by another author that actually tells you the same thing. This is Trading with the Enemy by Charles Higgum. And the subtext is the Nazi American money plot from 1933 to 1949. This is a big deal. Sociologists read these books. They're very, very dense. There's a lot of references. There's a lot of information. It's huge. I haven't even had time to go through this. And then a third one is American Swastika. Again, by Charles Higgum, okay? Now, this is a lot of stuff. These are enormous, enormous amounts of information in here, okay? I have a little guy, like he's this little, I guess this is a USB stick. It's a very, Marvin the, Martian. the little Marvin the Martian guy from the WB cartoons. Anyway, those books that I just showed you guys, uh, they are, they are proving Let's just make this clear. They are proving that there is a, uh, a collusion between the deep state folks in the German uh, camp, in this case, right, the Nazis, and Americans. In fact, you couldn't have had uh, World War II without American manufacturing. So I learned this because... Uh, I found out that we have all this crazy stuff with the Nazis having had their, their planes were apparently built by Boeing, okay? Their tanks were built by Ford. And here I have a college class in which my professor is grading me based on the idea that I have to know that Ford Motor Company repaid Hitler for the cost of, of his tank plants being damaged by Allied bombers. Ford Motor Company repaid Hitler, and Henry Ford was actually a really creepy Nazi dude, okay? And, and that's something you can study about. I've written about this. So how freaking weird is it, folks, when you have a college class in which it's a, a, a set of, it's a fact that, uh, that your grade depends upon knowing that the Americans basically built Hitler's Wehrmacht, built the war machine that was the uh, Hitler thing that was killing all these people. So like, wait a minute, how's that even possible? Well, it's possible because we're in this crazy situation where there is this hidden world order that actually plays both sides against the middle. They don't play fair. They are... Uh, they are cheating the system, and they have a bigger agenda than just what is on the surface in newspapers, television, and media. They are trying to get this new world order. They control both sides of a battle, and then they try to make those sides fight and get them to come together uh, and unify what they wanted. So in this case, uh, we have you know, the, the Nazi faction was really what they were hoping would get uh, the response that would be the world control. They really did think that they were going to get the Nazi side to, uh, to run the planet. And then what happened was 
that Hitler um, kind of flew in the face of that. Okay, it looks like I actually have to download uh, the Keynote software, because I don't know if I have it on this computer. This is all stuff that's had to happen over a long period of time. So let's go into... There's, I could explain why all this stuff needs to happen, but let me just get Keynote. That's the next thing we got to do here. So just hang on a second, everybody. Keynote. And we're going to get it. We're going to install it. Oh, my God. Really? Okay. Um, it's not letting me install Keynote because it says I need to have a newer operating system. That really, really sucks. All right, I guess... You want to use my computer? Yes, you... yes, let's use your computer. That's a great idea. Um, just... That's a great idea. Okay. Yep. Go get your laptop. I have it right or you can <laughs> swap out with me. All right, hold on. Sorry, this is so... He's dying. He's dying on stage. He's dying on the camera. This is ridiculous. I'm so sorry, folks. Uh, you know, but negative greeting is what's going to happen. This is the way the show works. Man. All right. Take this and put that in there. And then you can use the other one, which is now mostly charged. Let's get out of this. Yeah. Okay, folks. We're going to keep the train rolling here. And let's get rid of... She always has so many things open, so we're just, just going to save all that stuff. I'm not going to... Delete anything. Why don't you just save all that stuff? Well, well, I'm up. Just do it real quick. Okay. So let's talk about this stuff with Hitler. Um, it was crazy. I mean, being a college student and being graded on this, right? You want to get a good grade. You want to be academically proper, and this is what you have to know. So, and then the professor was saying, you know, this is the way the world really is. And sociologists who read these books by guys like Charles Higgum. Uh, and Anthony Sutton, we know this is true. Um, we know that, you know, there's this weird, like, in fact, Wall Street built up Hitler. Hitler couldn't have been doing all that stuff. He didn't have enough industry. The industrial power for those tanks and for those uh, bombers came from the U.S. And we were building what appeared to be passenger airliners, which were then getting shipped to South America, where they took the seats out, and then they would ship them over to Africa, where they'd repaint them and retool them to be Hitler's bombers. And then Hitler would use them. So we're fighting ourselves. So in light of all that stuff, uh, it's very, very bizarre to find out that this is the world that we really live in. And none of this ever really mattered as much as it does now, right? Because everybody right now is kind of in this weird limbo. And if you haven't been following the idea that there's an alliance, if you haven't been following the fact that there's a very strong resistance group that is working against these people, these, these cabal folks. Uh, that cabal is the most common thing that we've been calling it because we don't want to call it uh, something as scary sounding as the Illuminati. And even now the cabal word has kind of been distanced from and we're usually using the word deep state, but it's all the same stuff, okay? And that's the one that's really gone public in, you know, right-wing media, that's, that's common right-wing media. So we've done a lot of movies about this. We've talked about it in movies like Above Majestic and also in Cosmic Secret, uh, and you can still watch those. In fact, Cosmic Secret, we're about to put out a new version where my audio is better and we reshot everything, and it looks a lot better, sounds a lot better. So that's coming out. It should already be out, but if it's not out now, it will be soon. So this group goes way back in time. It traces back to the Roman Empire. It traces back to, uh, you got it? Did you load the keynote? the keynote program? Yeah. All right, I'll just do it. I'll just do it here because I know exactly what I need to do. All right, so I, I'll keep talking as I do this, and I'm going to be a little out of focus, so just hang out for a second, okay? Um, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's fine. So, again... Uh, this whole, this whole cabal thing has become a major, major part of my life and my work. I've studied them. I know their movements. I've spoken to people who are in it. This is not a joke. They are real. 
They, whether you believe it's true or not doesn't matter, they are real. Now, I do not think that this is the end of the world. I do not think these people are going to succeed in their sick, crazy agendas of what they're trying to do to us. Um, this does appear to be their final move. This is like their, their big thing. So one of the things we could talk about here for just a moment is you go back to history and you look at the history of the pirates. Now, the, the pirate flag is called the Jolly Roger, the skull and crossbones, okay? And that pirate flag is actually a symbol of the death that they are so enamored by. You know, they, they love and they worship death. They're like a death cult. So that's, you know, not a good thing for <laughs> anybody who enjoys being alive on this planet. Uh, you don't want to be un under the sway of a death cult. Now, let's see if we're going to get any uh, screen sharing here. That's the next thing I really have to take a moment to make sure is going to work. And I think it will. Um, hold on. We may be totally doomed here with the slides. I don't know. This is the last thing. If this doesn't work, then we're really just not going to do it. Yeah, I'm not, okay, hold on. Wow. I mean, never have I seen so many problems all in a row. So many problems. But this is what happens, folks. This is what happens. This is the, the serenely crazy aspect of how this thing works. You like that twist of phrase there? Serenely crazy. Yeah, it's not... For whatever reason, your computer is not putting out any video. It's not seeing it. It's not doing anything. I don't know how to do it through YouTube, so. All right, let's try unplugging this guy real quick. And then we'll plug it back in, see if that does anything that might do it. I got it. See, we're having a little married couple's quarrel here. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do the show? All right. So I will just go through these slides to some of them at least. And uh, but no, I, I really want to go back and do this right later. I just don't know how. Um, I don't know why that's not working. Uh, it's very, very, very bizarre. Let's just see one thing. Let me try one thing. Maybe this will work. No. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to give you guys then uh, some of this intel without, uh, without all the bells and whistles. And I will just go through certain things. Um, God, this is annoying. No, no, we're definitely not going to do anything that unprofessional. No, that's too unprofessional. Anyway, I don't want to do it that way. I want to just do it off the top of my head, and I'll tell you what I can remember, and then we'll do another show later where we're going to actually use the slides. Okay, a couple things. And then we, we don't have to make this terribly long either. Okay, so... After having all of these possible ways to try to do this kicked out from under me, uh, we just have to do this without slides. And that's fine, because I remember most of what I was going to say. UK Sunday Times in 2009 put out an article called Billionaire Bid to Curb Over Overpopulation. You can't find it anymore, because they took it down on their site after October 6, 2011. And it was published in 2009 in May. I think it was May 23rd. Billionaire bid to curb overpopulation is talking about these guys getting together and having a secret meeting because they don't want religions involved and they don't want governments involved because they see that population is this horrible, horrible problem that is such a big deal that we have to, you know, do, we have to do something, but they have to, 
They don't want to look like a cabal. That's one of the things it says in the article. They don't want to look like a secret global cabal. But who are the names involved in this thing? Rockefeller, right? David Rockefeller. Then you got uh, Warren Buffett. And of course, you've got Bill Gates. And Bill Gates is putting the whole thing on. Bill Gates and these guys get together and they have this meeting in which they discuss the idea that population must be reduced because if they don't curb population, they're going to have this huge problem and everybody's going to die. Now, I've never agreed with this. I've had these cabal people try to tell me this kind of stuff, and it's like, no, I don't, I don't buy it. I'm not into it. Um, you can't act like you are God and take over for nature. Nature has a way of solving these things, and what's especially crazy is that, like, the Amazon River Basin, according to some of my insiders, you could relocate 20 to 30 billion people in there comfortably. Yeah, you'd have to develop it, but is it better, is it better to develop it than to let a lot, a lot of people die? I think it's better to develop it. It's not like you're going to kill it. There's plenty of room. The whole thing is almost totally untouched. And it's all green, and there's lots of water, and there's lots of... You know, you'd have to terraform, you'd have to change things around, but you can make it work. So, oh, oh you're going to clear cut the forest, David? What, well, you want to let everybody die? Well, everybody's so upset now that 1% of people might die. Okay, well, yeah, we could, we could clear cut. We could do that. We could do enough of it that it's not going to cause any lasting damage and we could help a lot more people stay alive. And then you have the fact that they're holding on to technology where they could develop off planet. And that's one of the things that's been hidden from us. And again, you can laugh if you're not used to my work and this is funny to you, that's fine. But there's a lot of science behind this. Let's cut over to this camera now. So, uh, I get that this stuff sounds crazy sometimes, and that's fine, uh, but I have been studying this for a long time, and I'm very confident about what we're saying. So, this article from 2009 in the UK Sunday Times uh, said that these guys see population as this thing they have to combat, and that overpopulation is the issue they need to focus on. Well, a year after that, in 2010, Bill Gates pledged that he's going to donate $10 billion to his foundation for vaccine research. While he was in the meeting from the year before where they said they need to stop overpopulation, which means kill people. And then another guy who was at the meeting, Warren Buffett from Berkshire Hathaway, pledged $35 billion to uh, this foundation. So, or, or 25 billion, I guess. So the total amount ends up being like 35 to 40 billion dollars, something like that. Or I think actually Warren Buffett put in 35. So then you have Bill Gates putting in, uh, you know, 10 billion on top of 4.5. It's a total of about 50 billion dollars. Over the next decade, that's what he said. He put 10 billion over the next decade. Now, it is a fact. It is a fact, folks that you can go to the Department of Justice website on January 23rd is, I believe, the date, okay? It is a fact that a Harvard professor, and I believe his name, if I'm remembering it correctly, is Charles Litgens. He was arrested because he is working for this company called Thousand Talents, and they were in Wuhan, and they were misleading and lying to the U.S. government about what their money was being used for, and they had large budgets, and they were working on viruses and vaccines. In Wuhan, with the Chinese, with two other Chinese nationals. Now there's already this stuff that comes out on a Snopes type of website called factcheck.org, which has the star and the check mark, and it's supposed to be all official, saying, oh, 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 this has absolutely nothing to do with the COVID-19. It's totally random coincidence that this guy was arrested by the Department of Justice. It's a totally random coincidence that his whole enterprise was running out of Wuhan, that he's working with these people. But then on March 13th, Friday the 13th, Bill Gates steps down from Microsoft and Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. He just mysteriously resigned. Now, we have an insider who I'm acquainted with, and my wife is acquainted with him as well, very much so. And he has a guy who is his top guy. 
And I'm not going to say why he's the top guy, and I'm not going to say where he is the top guy in, but this is a very well-placed insider. And what he said is that one of this professor's two uh, Chinese people that he was working with, a woman, was arrested and found, they found, the Alliance, the DOJ, found 23 vials of COVID-19 in her sock drawer. That has happened. That is real. And we were told that this is going to go public. This is going to be in the news. Well, he also told me that Bill Gates's company is the one that was paying for all this research, and that's also proven. So therefore, maybe the reason why Bill Gates resigned is that he knows something's about to go down, and they couldn't scrub that thing off the internet, that article from 2009. Now here's another really sad thing, folks. Oprah Winfrey was in that meeting. It says that in the article. And I had briefings from another insider telling me that when she heard what these guys were up to, that she staggered out of the meeting and threw up. Okay, now I don't want to throw Oprah under the bus, but you are going to see that when you go look for this thing. You can find it on archive.org. It's just that there's no newer copies of it than 2011. And then there's a whole bunch of other versions of it that other people uploaded that you can find that's not on Sunday Times. Uh, but you can go back to the original link and then you can pop it in archive.org and get the original. As long as you go back before October 6, 2011. I don't think Oprah's in support of this at all. I really don't think she wants to see a bunch of people die, and I think she was very perturbed by this. It's probably part of why she didn't run for president, which she would have had a good chance, I think, if she did. Uh, wouldn't Oprah and Trump going at it be just so freaking funny? I mean, let's just stop for a second and think about that. Wow. Like, man, incendiary. There's a lot of stuff that he could not get away with saying in that environment, right? <laughs> to put it mildly. Wow, that would be crazy. So, um, yeah, this is, this is crazy. 23 vials of COVID-19. Now, what does that mean? Our insiders were telling us that these guys have been, you know, the deep state folks, have been turning this thing into an aerosol and spraying it over population centers to try to keep it going. But, again, what else did I tell you? There's been a problem. The virus was supposed to be far more lethal, and it has changed, and they don't know why. That, I think, is part of the divine intervention. This thing was supposed to do a lot more than that. It was supposed to do a lot more than 1%. They had designed it that way. They're supposed to be combating overpopulation. That's what they want to do. They said they were going to do that in 2009. The year later, they put the money in to make this thing go. And of course, if you go and watch the movie Contagion, which everybody is watching right now, there's a character played by Jude Law, and he's the conspiracy theorist. And so they want you to think that if anybody tells you this stuff, like what I'm doing right now, that it's all fake and it's all BS and, uh, oh, he's making all that up. Well, no, just go read it for yourself. Read the article that I told you to read. Okay? It's there. But what's the implication? What's the deeper implication of all this? It's really weird because these people tried to destroy the planet. But again, China has done three months of social distancing, and you can find it online if you actually go look, because I know there's so much news going on, it's very hard to sort it out. There's no new cases. No new cases of COVID-19 at all. So yeah, they had a few thousand, several thousand people die. Compared to the po population of China, it's, it's statistically insignificant, really. It's horrible, yes, but 20,000 people have died from the flu. And my insider was talking to a, a prominent immunologist, and the immunologist said, look, I understand the numbers, and none of this makes sense. Why are they shutting society down? Now, I think it's good, okay? I think it's good that everybody stays inside, because it will slow the spread of this thing even faster, but they can't milk this for very long. All right, let's talk about what's really going on here. First of all, as I said, biological life, biological life has this energetic component. Your prayers, your alignments can change the way this virus runs, can make this virus less bad. So before we do anything else, right now, let's do this together, okay? I'd like you to close your eyes. 
stop writing all those crazy comments. It's going to go a million miles an hour over there. <laughs> Can't even read that stuff. Just close your eyes for a minute. Take a nice deep breath. Feel yourself getting more and more grounded and centered. And imagine the planet surrounded with light. Imagine the planet bathed in this beautiful light. A healing, cleansing, purifying light. Imagine this light easing all of the difficulties. Imagine this light changing the frequencies of this possibly man-made virus. Look at those molecules in your mind. Look at molecules. See the molecules. Look at those little molecules. See them rearranging beneficial mutations of this virus to make it less and less and less of a problem. Your thoughts have power. And as you meditate with me now, and as you pray with me now, you are changing those molecules. You are rearranging those molecules. I want you to allow yourself to believe that it's possible. We have the science. I showed you the book where I wrote about it. Breathe deeply. And imagine light going into those little viruses. And imagine them rearranging. And imagine those molecules becoming less lethal. Whatever stuff they put in this thing, if it is artificial, it's changing around, it's retooling itself, it's not as big as it was, it's not as bad as it was. And I want you to feel gratitude for yourself. Because when you are in a time of testing like this, when it's emotional, when it's scary, when it's sad, just let yourself be grateful for the life that you have, for the friends who've smiled at you, the people, the family members that you know. Just be grateful for them. Send them love. Don't forget to call them. Stay in touch. Reach out. Be kind. Don't attack people on the internet right now. Don't get angry. Go gently, move slower, let yourself relax. And visualize everything healing on the planet, becoming more and more perfect, more and more complete in every way. You can do this. Your thoughts have power. And more than anything, I ask you, I beg you to love yourself. I want you to feel gratitude for your life. I really don't think this is the end of the world at all. I think it's the Great Awakening. But even if it was, I believe you are immortal. I believe your life will go on throughout eternity in some form. Death is a transformation. There are so many people who have reported a near-death experience where they go through that process and they find people that they loved who are no longer alive greeting them in a beautiful field. Some of them see gorgeous crystal cities, staggeringly beautiful, magnificent architecture, enormous and gorgeous. And we all end up discovering that there is a life review, what Danny and Brinkley calls the panoramic life review, where we get to see who we are and who we have been from the perspective of being a spiritual being incarnated in a human form whose purpose is to learn to love. And you might want to laugh right now, and that's okay. But I just ask you to keep breathing. And let yourself relax. 
because this is science. It's just not popular because the controllers don't want you to know that you're immortal. They don't want you to know that you have a spiritual agenda, that everything you do matters. Because when you're in that panoramic life review, you end up reliving how you made all the other people you know feel. If you caused pain, if you caused hurt, if you caused shame, humiliation, depression, sadness, you get to experience what that person felt as if it was you. And this can go on for quite some time as you relive every event, every situation that you went through. So just let yourself relax and understand that we all go through this. We all have a spiritual self on the other side. And we're wanting to become more and more evolved. We're wanting to become more and more enlightened. And we will reincarnate. It is up to us as to whether we will reincarnate as human again, in the systems of belief that I teach at least, or whether we will handle this new opportunity for what has been called ascension, detailed in all 35 of the world's major spiritual traditions. Ascension is about becoming something new, becoming a being of light, no longer needing to be in a realm of flesh in which you are vulnerable to illness, to disease, to injury, to death, in which you have the ability to levitate, the ability to manifest objects out of thin air, the ability to communicate telepathically, the ability to bilocate yourself, to be in more than one place at the same time, to increase or decrease your physical size, to manifest objects out of thin air, to make yourself lighter or heavier. This is something that has been talked about by Jesus and by so many other great teachers. It's the promise of where all this is taking us as a planet. So again, consider the vastness of yourself, your identity, and then focus that love back into yourself. Give yourself a break. Give yourself some credit. Let yourself just relax. It's not so bad. It's not so crazy. We're going to do this. We're going to get through this together. And again, envision your light radiating into those viral cells, whether they're man-made or not, changing them, lessening their impact, reducing their destructiveness. Planet-wide, a blanket of light covering the planet. If there are people who were storing 23 vials of COVID-19 in their sock drawer, as the briefings have told us, releasing this in a misguided sense of saving the planet, send them love and healing. Let us please not bring out torches and pitchforks and treat everyone who was in this so-called Illuminati as the ultimate villain. So many people are trying to escape and get out. So many people have gotten out. And if someone decides to turn against a group like this and do the right thing for the betterment of humanity, they are a hero. And that is very important. All right, I'm going to close this meditation now and just ask that you share this light and this love with yourself. And remember to be kind to others and just be at peace. And so it is. Amen. All right. So that's one of the things that, uh, that I wanted to talk to you about is the 23 vials. But there's a lot more going on. In, on March 3rd, there was an Italian newspaper that announced that there is a huge drill going on involving an international effort of militaries around the world in Europe, 
in which the U.S., as of March 3rd, was sending over the next week 20,000 more troops to add to the 10,000 that they already had. And they also have tanks. Abrams tanks, I believe, is what it was. And so, oh yeah, we got the phone ringing now. This is very professional. Whoever that is, if you're watching, don't call me right now. <laughs> okay. Let me get a drink of water. They're going to just let that ring through, so I guess we got to just deal with it. Whoever this is, they're not watching my show. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. Oh, we're getting a lot of slides here. I might actually read some of this because some of this, we're going to do it again in another slideshow, but I want to get specific. So I'll do some specifics. Let's see. Okay, hold on, everybody. <laughs> Here we go, 30,000 troops. Now you're getting called. What is going on? Okay, never mind. Okay, so most of these troops have been sent to Europe from the U.S. in the last two weeks. Now these are highly trained operatives. And uh, there, you can read this, okay? Um, and I'm reading from a particular article, and it says, Manlio Danucci, writing in the Italian web newspaper Il Manifesto on March 3rd, 2020, reports that despite Trump's travel ban, 20,000 American troops will be traveling to Europe in the next few days, joining the 10,000 who are already there. What in the hell is going on? But wait, there's more. <laughs> the 20,000 soldiers beginning to arrive from the United States and European ports and airports for the Defender Europe 20 exercise. That's what it's called. The largest U.S. troop deployment in Europe in the last 25 years. The largest troop deployment in Europe in the last 25 years is happening right now in the middle of the coronavirus thing. A lot of people, and these are highly trained operatives, including those already present, about 30,000 U.S. troops will participate in April and May, flanked by another 7,000 troops from 17 NATO member and partner countries, including Italy. There's 37,000 troops running around in Europe right now. And none of these troops have been issued with bio hazchem suits or masks, which seems a little reckless of the American government if COVID-19 is really the threat we are being told that it is. They don't have masks. The 30,000 US soldiers who will spread throughout the entire European region with tanks are in fact exempted from the preventative COVID-19 regulations that would apply to normal civilians. The assurance given by the U.S. Army in Europe that, quote, we are monitoring the coronavirus and that, quote, our forces are in good health is enough. At the same time, the environmental impact of a military exercise of this magnitude is ignored. Oh, my God, there's like pollution coming out of the tanks as they run them. Well, I'm not so worried about that, right? Because what we're getting from our briefings, folks, is that this is a a targeted effort for the mass arrests that I've been telling you about this whole time. That's why they're there. There's 37,000 troops from 18 countries, including the U.S., many, many U.S. troops. You better believe those are elite soldiers. They're very trained. What are they doing? They're going to the places where the deep state is. They're infiltrating their strongholds, and they are arresting people. They're not torturing people. They're not killing people. And so I know that some people are going to want to think this is a coup, but listen to what I just said. It's 18 countries. This is an international effort. Why did the UK pull out of the euro? Why did Brexit happen? Why did the British fight it for so long? Because when they pull out of the euro, it collapses the global economy. But that's actually a good thing in this case because these same guys, and again, you got it right here, you know, Wall Street and the rise of Hitler, these, these are the books that fueled that college class that I had, okay? Wall Street made Hitler. And again, <laughs> you can think I'm crazy, but just go ahead and read this, okay? It's real. So another thing I want to talk to you guys about before we go on anything else, and I'll get back to the 37,000 troops because you've got to hear the rest of this. But before we do that, another book that I wrote is called Synchronicity Key. And again, you can see this thing is a monster. It's 500 plus pages. 
576 pages. The purpose of this book was to show that historical events are not random, that they are structured and organized based upon cycles. And so we are in an all is lost point. Okay, that's what it's called. Because as it turns out, what this book says is that there is a storyline that keeps repeating in history. There's a hero's journey, it's called. And I found out when I started to work for Hollywood and write screenplays for Convergence, which unfortunately we never were able to get it in development. We're still trying, but it's gotten much, much harder. This was written with the guy that wrote Contact to be a blockbuster film. And you can't get a blockbuster film made these days unless you have the budget for it, which is a lot. So we're trying, we're still trying, uh, but we haven't gotten it yet. So anyway, this book explains that in the Hollywood screenwriting, there, are, there is a structure that you have to follow. They do not call it a formula, they call it structure. And the structure is that you have first act, second act, and third act. The first act is the first 30 pages. The second act is pages 31 through 90. And then the third act is pages 91 through 120. And you wanna, okay. <laughs> She's tweaking my lights. So, that three-act structure is essentially like uh, beginning, middle, and ending. It's, it's uh, setup, conflict, and resolution, the three acts. Act one, setup. Act two, conflict. Act three, resolution. Now, this is something that you're going to get in every movie that you see. There is a central character who's the hero. It could be a man or a woman. They have flaws. There's, there's flaws in their character. Some of those flaws are... Uh, Oh, and if, you, if you're looking about, like, the shadow in between my eyes, we could also hit that light on, you know, if that's what you're trying to fix. Turn that light on. Yeah, I don't really have this silly look to me. It's just because we're lit, lit from the sides. Crank that sucker on. That should fix it. Not the DCAC switch, the other switch. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's more blinding, but it's going to look better. All right, we got it. So... Again, I'm not trying to sell this. You probably can't even buy it right now, but I just, if you've read this, if you understand it, it was a New York Times bestseller just like the other one. And the point is that the storyline has an all is lost point. It happens around page 85. They even know what page to do it on. The hero is supposed to look like he died for five pages of screen time. And if these cycles take place over hundreds of years in some cases, then the all is lost point can appear to be a pretty good length of time. It's, they also call it the whiff of death. Now, what did I conclude? I concluded that the hero's journey storyline is what we call a series of archetypes. Joseph Campbell called it the monomyth. Every culture has these archetypes in it. Every culture has the hero's journey in it because it's our spiritual DNA. Hollywood films need to follow this structure if they want anybody to watch it. And if you don't have the structure, people don't watch the movie. And they found that over and over again. It's very hard to get somebody to watch a movie if you don't do this. You have a single hero. He faces off, he or she, I'll use he for right now, faces off against a villain. The villain is the mirror inverted form of the hero. If the hero were to go down a dark path and let his flaws overtake him. So the hero, for example, the beginning you always have to have six things that need fixing. There's problems with the hero. They'll show you that at the beginning of the movie very clearly. Then there's a villain. And the villain is what the hero would turn into if those flaws took over. In the movie Alien, the character played by Sigourney Weaver didn't let the infected guy into the ship, which in hindsight kind of looks like a good idea, right? Because he's got this alien inside of him. But her complete disregard for his life, if it was taken down a dark path, makes her like the alien where the alien is killing everything. That's an example a lot of these screenwriting books would use. So as this relates to the cycles of history, I'll put this down now. As this relates to the cycles of history, we find out that history has these patterns in which things always happen the same way, okay? And it's remarkably consistent. And a certain scientist I talk about in the book going all the way back to Babylonian times, Sumeria, Okay, it's the same cycles over and over and over again. There's a Russian scientist who was looking into all that stuff, and it was sanctioned and approved by 
uh, this Garry Kasparov, who was one of the top chess masters in the world. He believes it's true. And I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head because it's been too long. But uh, anyway, it's in the book. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've shown how cycles of time happen and very precise patterns repeat themselves. So please understand that we've never had a true global all is lost point quite like this before, but this happens over and over again. And we're in that part of the hero's journey where it appears to be the all is lost point. But then, wait a minute, something happens. It's not the end. It's only page 85 in the script. The hero has to appear to be dead. I remember being a kid and watching E.T., the movie. And when E.T. appeared to be dead, I cried my eyes out. And I really believed he was dead. And then when E.T. comes back to life, because Elliot's loving him, oh my God, that resurrection was so amazing, and I was just crying and crying and crying. And as a kid, I hardly ever cried. So... When you understand that this is an archetype, that this is a pattern, that this is a spiritual blueprint that we all have to follow, okay, it becomes a lot different at that point. It no longer is the end. It's just that tipping point in the story. So I'm looking at the fact, some very basic things, okay, I'm looking at the fact that all the lights are on, that the water is on, the sewage is on, that we have gasoline, that the financial system is running, money is flowing, people are going to work, people are doing their jobs. If, if they're critical infrastructure jobs, they're still doing that stuff. All these guys are still running their blowers around here. Everybody's lawn is going to look good, okay? <laughs> Much as we don't like the blowers, they're still running. So what I'm saying is we're not in the end of the world. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a psychologist. I've studied history. We went through the whole freaking written history. We looked at this cycle. We see it happening over and over again. Everybody who's in the phase that we're in, whatever country you're in, wherever you are when this happens, it always seems like it's the end of time. It always seems like it's the end of the world. Imagine if you were in Indonesia in the middle of tsunami. Imagine if you're in Japan in the middle of Fukushima, for God's sake. How did we all feel as a planet in the middle of that Gulf oil disaster, where this oil is shooting into the Gulf and they're saying, oh, we're all going to die. And every time there's a war, oh, we're all going to die, okay? This is nothing new. It's just that we haven't had one where we're all doing it together. So what happens in the structure at the all is lost point is that the hero appears to be dead, but then is resurrected. There is a change. There is, there is a way out. The hero then realizes at this point that he or she must face his or her flaws, and I'll just continue using the masculine pronoun, he must face his flaws to fix the problem. So whatever he's been holding back from, whatever he needs to do to transform, if it's a romantic comedy, it's usually a fear of intimacy or an attachment to some other person, something like that, some kind of emotional blockage that stops that person from loving the love interest in the movie. Because in a romantic comedy, even if it's a comedy, they always have to be quarreling and not getting along, and maybe they're going to break up, and we don't really know, okay? So that would be an example of the all is lost point. They don't always physically die in movies, but they will have their quest appear to be completely destroyed. But in all the best movies, the ones that really hit this the most, you're going to have the hero appear physically dead. And we get to watch cycles that normally take place over years and years of time, all compressed into two hours when we see a movie. And it gives us, it's like going to church because we're seeing the hero's journey, which is really the story of Jesus, the story of Christ, the story of the galactic mind, as I talk about in my new book, uh, Awakening in the Dream, which hopefully is still going to come out on June 2nd. So again, China shut everything down for three months and now they don't have COVID-19 and they're getting back to work, 95% production, okay? Why are they out there telling you it's going to be 18 months? It doesn't even make sense. Everybody's doing social distancing, and we don't even have that many deaths, right? So what's going on here? After the hero has his resurrection, the next step that happens is that there is a rededication to solving the quest and defeating the villain. And at that point, 
you have a very interesting thing that the screenwriter books always tell you to do. The first act is the ordinary mundane world. The first 30 pages is the hero in his normal world. And then there is an initiation into the quest, whatever the hero really wants. There's got to be a passionate primal drive for something to happen. After page 30, the hero goes into what they call the magical world. And typically a director will change the way the movie looks. There will be different color tones, different light tones. And it's a totally different environment that the hero goes into. That always happens. You can even measure it right down to the 30 minute mark a lot of times. And I pause films when I see these things happening. I show this to Elizabeth all the time. Like, yeah, they're in the second act now. In the second act, the hero meets allies. Okay, this is very important. Allies. And then, after the all is lost point, after the whiff of death, after the dark night of the soul, the hero has all the allies suddenly show up to help him defeat the villain. And there's so many movies where this happens. Avatar. I mean, Avatar, James Cameron followed this hero's journey thing down to the letter. So all these people show up to defeat the bad guy at the end, after, after the all is lost point. So again, this is the way the cycles of history work. Don't think the machine broke and that we're all just going to die. That's not what this is about. We're just in a collective awakening. It is what QAnon is calling the Great Awakening, okay? And the allies in this case, at least part of it is these 18 countries that are doing this massive military exercise, right? They're using, the good guys are now using the tradecraft of the deep state against them. They had a drill. But look at what the media is doing to try to make this thing look bad. I want to read some more of this to you so you get how the allies, these 37 troops, are now coming in after the all is lost point to help this villain, which is the global deep state, be defeated, okay? U.S. Abrams tanks will participate weighing 70 tons with depleted uranium shells. Okay, well, that's weird. Why do they need tanks? It's a military exercise, the biggest one in 25 years. Well, maybe they're going to be going into some people's strongholds, folks. Some of these guys that are billionaires and they're satanic, if you start to learn about this, that's what's really going on. You got to bust in through those compounds. You got to get these people. You got to arrest them. Hopefully they don't provide armed resistance. Some of them are not going to make it. Okay. But this is not a coup. This is not the end of the world. It's saving the world. These people already tried to kill the planet. So if, if you think this is a coup, that's okay. But they already fired their best shot. And I don't believe that we're, I do not believe this is the end of the world at all. Each tank consumes 400 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers, producing heavy pollution to deliver maximum power. I don't care. I don't care. Get those tanks in there, do the job. The UK media fought back. And then, this is what is so funny, I actually found this newspaper online called UK Morning Star. Now, does the Morning Star expression sound familiar to you? Yes, it should. It refers to Lucifer, okay? Lucifer is the Morning Star. Everybody knows this. It's not any special proprietary intel, okay? The Morning Star newspaper has this article, which is from March 18th. Yeah, it's literally yesterday. NATO must end its dangerous and irresponsible military exercise along Russia's border, according to campaigns. It's not just Russia's border, it's all throughout Europe. Oh, dangerous and irresponsible, right? Well, you can't make this stuff up. To call it, you know, the Morning Star, like, my goodness. All right. So I'm going to read you what it says. Stop the War, which is a protest group, very likely a deep state-influenced protest group. I don't know that, but I'm assuming that. Okay, it's a fair assumption under the circumstances. Stop the War has urged the U.S. government to pull British troops out of the U.S.-led Defender Europe 20 exercise, the biggest deployment of U.S. soldiers on the continent for 25 years. Since January, some 6,000 soldiers and 3,000 pieces of equipment have been sent from the U.S. to Europe according to Stop the War. Pieces of equipment, you notice how they don't say what it is? Dude, that is not guns, okay? A, a, a piece of equipment could be a troop and materials carrier. It could be a whole plane 
that's filled in its belly with tanks, let's say. 3,000 pieces of equipment. A tank could be a piece of equipment. A jet could be a piece of equipment. This is a major thing, the biggest military operation in Europe in 25 years. And there's plenty of that stuff here in the U.S. And what have we been telling you for 11 years? You're going to have to stay home. It's probably going to be about two weeks. It might be a little longer than that now that they did it this way. And this is, again, the deep state. It's not the alliance. I do not believe the alliance is responsible for this virus at all. So uh, when you have that many soldiers and, and war materiel in Europe and you look at the timing, it's very, very suspicious. And then you've got the Morning Star saying, oh, this is dangerous and irresponsible. We don't want to be here. 3,000 pieces of equipment. That's a lot. The five-month exercise is expected to peak at the end of April and the beginning of May. Well, they probably don't even need to wait that long. Stop the Wars calls were echoed, this is the protest groups that are very likely deep state based, echoed by anti-war group, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, or CND. See, they want to make it sound like they're doing something good. It is absolutely essential that UK troops are withdrawn from Defender 20 and that the whole event is canceled, according to CND General Secretary Kate Hudson. This, in effect, is a private practice invasion of Europe by 30,000 US troops. Well, it's also 17 other countries. She doesn't mention that. At the best of times, this would be a disastrous military provocation. Wait a minute. Dude, it's 17 other countries. Why? It's not a provocation. They're working together. It's just that you all don't like what they're doing, okay? In the current public health crisis, it jeopardizes the lives, not only of troops from the U.S. and many European countries participating, but the inhabitants of the countries in which they are operating. This criminal folly has to end. Well, what have I been telling you guys about? What's the whole QAnon thing about? The Great Awakening, right? The mass arrests. This is nothing new. I didn't know it was going to be this intense, and I, but I, remember I've told you that we thought maybe the power would go out. And I've been telling you this since like, what, 2010, 2009, from Pete Peterson, my original insider. Guess what? We don't have a power outage. We haven't lost water. We haven't lost sewage. We haven't lost gas. The, you remember the original cabal plan was that they were going to drive around and siphon out everybody's gas from their cars, literally going around and siphoning out all the gas of the parked cars on the road. They had a plan, which they're not going to do this time, because this is the good guys now. But the bad guys had these detonation charges in the bridges for all the interstates. So everybody gets geographically isolated. That was built into the original Eisenhower interstate system in order to prevent a land invasion from going through America. That was how it was sold to us, privately. So they can blow all the bridges. They can isolate everybody geographically which means goods and services can't get in, which means mass starvation. You saw what happened with Hurricane Katrina. You saw how they got everybody into the Superdome. And then they locked them in there, and they didn't feed them, and they didn't let them out. And they left them in there for like five days, which is really insane. That was the Bush administration, Hurricane Katrina. Okay, I wrote about that in Synchronicity Key. I had heard before this happened from my insider, Daniel, who unfortunately has now passed away, I'm sad to report that, that they had plans, they, the deep state, had plans to herd people into these arenas all over the country in the, in the course of some kind of mass crisis. I had another Illuminati insider tell me that the original plan for 9-11 was to do it in five cities, to decapitate the snake, as they called it, in five cities. It would have been much, much worse than what 9-11 actually was, and again, Pete Peterson had heard about this. He had moved to Idaho to ride it out in a country, in an area of the country where you can survive very easily. There's lots of elk. You could literally walk across their backs because they're in such huge herds. And uh, so there's way more of the, uh, survival that they need there, you know, livestock and water and, and crops and food and storage and all that stuff. So this is not what we're seeing. It's a 1% death rate. And so again, don't freak out. This is actually really exciting. Whatever is going on here, I think, is the mass arrest. These 37,000 troops from 18 countries are out there right now doing the job to save your life because the problem is in Europe and it's in America. And that's where most of this is. 
Now, let me give you another thing that happened. Saudi Arabia. What did Saudi Arabia do? Are you aware of this? Are you aware that Saudi Arabia has plummeted the price of oil? Why do you think they would do that? Why would Saudi Arabia sell off all their oil for pennies on the dollar, drive the gas price down to practically nothing? Because it cripples the oil people. It cripples the money going into these oil businesses, and the alliance knows that if their finances are cut off for a period of time, they're done. So what are we seeing? All these things about, oh, it's going to be a depression. It's worse than, it's worse than 1929. There's graphs showing that it's crashing faster than 1929. Worse than the Great Depression. Oh my God, it's so bad. Oh my God, we're all going to die. The world's never going to be the same. It's a horrible economic collapse. It's all this stuff. All right? Since I don't have all my slides here, I want to, you know, I can't do this the way I want to do it. I want to get you into some of this QAnon stuff because this is really, really critical. Okay? And then I will figure out, hopefully figure out, how to get all these slides to run. And we'll get this whole show done over the course of a long period of time. But I do want to get this done. Okay, first of all, very, very important. Let's see. Now, on no, okay. November 11th, 2009, 11 11 of all things, QAnon referenced Project Looking Glass. In their post, which is, let's see, I have it right here, post number 3585. It says, Project Looking Glass, question mark, going forward in order to look back. Now, if you haven't followed this QAnon thing, this is in extremely important, okay? The QAnon phenomenon has had over 500 proofs that it is being run by the President of the United States. Over 500 things they've done that are really obvious. Trump himself being up there making speeches, leadingly saying the number 17. He's done this a bunch of times. 17 is the 17th letter of the alphabet is Q, okay? Q plus appears to actually be Trump. There's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of articles in mainstream media saying QAnon is BS. They've attacked it so much. But I was meeting with this woman calling herself Mega Anon, and I put that article out on October 11th where she was saying that she was working within the inner circle of the President of the United States and that they were trying to do these mass arrests, that they were going to defeat the deep state, that this is a plan that's going to work. It's been in place since the 1950s, and I have a lot more slides on that. Okay. So Mega Anon and I ended up talking because I wrote about her and I didn't think she was a woman, and I thought it was actually a man pretending to be a woman, and she took that personally and got mad and actually figured out how to get a hold of me. And I said, yeah, I'll talk to you. And I ended up calling the number that she gave me. She had a burner throwaway phone. And Elizabeth and I both ended up talking to her on the phone. It was amazing. But she talked so fast with such a level of intricate knowledge that it was really hard to follow. Uh, all this political stuff with Strzok and Cabe and, and you know, McCabe and, and Page and all Comey and you know all the all the stuff all the stuff you're hearing about the FISA stuff man she had it down like an encyclopedia it was crazy you know the, the Wiener laptop and the Huma Abedin and Hillary and Pizzagate and Podesta and satanic pedophiles and all this crazy stuff man it just went on and on and on and on she really knew about it she had gone to Vegas after the shootings because Trump apparently was there at that time having a meeting at Mandalay Bay Hotel. And they had they, the deep state had tried to make that a much bigger thing that would have included the assassination of the president. It didn't work. But they were really going to flip the switch after Vegas, which was right at the beginning of October 2017. She come, I come out with this article talking about the Vegas shootings and how much I disliked it and the plans to defeat these people that would do something like this because it's very freaking strange how you never really saw any footage and the whole thing doesn't add up because there's more than one shooter, but they say, oh, it's just this one guy shooting out of his window. There's so much evidence to dispute that. You can hear it in the videos. You can hear different machine guns going off at the same time. So when they tell you there's only one gunner, mm -mm -mm, doesn't work. Sorry, it's not true. Can't be true. It's impossible. Something really stinky going on there, and it goes very deep. So go back and look at my Vegas the Vegas articles I wrote on this 
Wouldn't have done any videos. It was too crazy. Anyway, November 11th, 2019, QAnon, which very definitely appears to be coming from the administration, and I've got tons of articles that talk about that, and several of them are now well over 5 million hits. Some, one of them's up to 5.7 million views, believe it or not. This QAnon thing is what I've been telling you. It's the fulfillment of what I've been telling you since 2009. I was getting a lot of proprietary briefings from Pete Peterson, from other insiders, through Corey Good. We met some of them. I've met these people in person. Elizabeth has met some of these people in person. We've been to their place, some of them, okay? Talking to some of them now. We get a lot of briefings. That's real. And we know that the military has turned. The military of the United States, for the most part, has turned, and the intelligence community, for the most part, has turned. They are not evil. They are not trying to get us hurt. They are not trying to get us killed. They are trying to save the planet from these toxic vampire satanic people who literally drink human blood because apparently if you torture somebody, their body releases a bunch of DMT when they die. If you drink the DMT, you hallucinate and you get addicted to it. It's a drug, okay? So torturing people and drinking their blood is an addiction and it actually gets you high, really high. And then the other thing that's so weird, which I talk about in Above Majestic and other places like that, is that when you drink the blood, I actually didn't talk about this in Above Majestic. Apparently, there are these demonic entities that you will then be able to see with a hallucination. So the hallucinatory effect of DMT allows you to be able to summon these things that you normally wouldn't be able to see, but they become visible, like if you draw a pentagram, that these things will summon into the middle of the pentagram. Two of the people who did that in, the, in this so-called Babylon working were Jack Parsons, the founder of Jet Propulsion Laboratory, literally the founder of the U.S. NASA space program, and L. Ron Hubbard, who became the leader of Scientology. Okay? That's true. You can look that up. It's real. They apparently did get this impish creature to materialize inside their pentagram at the end of the ceremony they were doing. It's crazy stuff, dude. I don't understand these people, and, you know, some people have a real hard time coping with it when I tell them this, and the only way they can wrap their head around it is, well, David must be part of this thing. David must be in the cabal. Believe me, I am not. Believe me, I have put my life at risk extensively to do this. And I do this because I have to. I do this because we need to. We need to defeat these people. Look at what they've done. If you believe like I do, that the reason why that guy got arrested from Harvard, who was financed by Bill Gates, and he was working in Wuhan, and then this woman apparently had 23 vials of COVID-19 in her sock drawer, they did this deliberately. That's going to come out, okay? They fired a shot. They're trying to kill the planet. Thank God it's not that bad. It's only 1% fatality rate at the most. But we still need to stay inside. We still need to honor this thing. So. QAnon has actually said in September of 2018 that there is a secret space program, and they said that Roswell is real. One of the things that Pete Peterson and others have told me for so long is, once they do the mass arrests, once, just like Mega Anon said and just like QAnon has said, once we get the big sit down and we as a planet get told the truth, okay, everybody, here's what's going on. Sorry, but the planet was being run by these evil people. It's like a bad grade B horror movie, I get it, but it's actually real. When we get that point, when we get to that hurdle, okay, it's not going to be too long before they tell us that UFOs and extraterrestrials are real, and that the vast majority of these extraterrestrials are human, and that they are not evil, they're actually very benevolent. It's only like 5% or less of the ETs that are around us that are, that are negative, and the rest are positive, but they do have to follow what you could think of as like the prime directive. They can't just show up and tell us who they are and tell us what they're up to. So, both Elizabeth and I are using our intuitive capabilities to see into the future. This is a normal human function that has been denied to you because the media won't tell you about ESP. You have to go and research it on your own like I did in the source field. There's tons of laboratory experiments showing that people really are psychic. You have to train for it. You have to learn it like you're learning to play piano. People can do this. It's called remote viewing. Remote viewing, I'll put this down for a second. I'm going to get a drink of water. Let's change the angle, huh? 
the blemishes on my face will probably be too uh, ugly to see if I stay on that wide shot for too long. No. Tight shot. <laughs> All right, about the black eye thing. The way my face works, there's this funny, bony thing I have right here. It's not a black eye. It's just the way light reflects on my face. If you light it properly, it's not there. That's all it is, okay? <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. Whatever. Okay. I'm aware of it, but it's very hard to light it where you, where, light my face from all different angles where you never see it. Yeah. It's just the way light reflects on my face. So, we all have the ability to be psychic, and this was trained to people in remote viewing. Now, remote viewing is where an ordinary person can become 99% accurate as a psychic. I learned about this in 1996 uh, from Art Bell, uh, the show Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. And then, of course, uh, it was just something that Dr. Courtney Brown wrote about. He gave the protocols in his book, um, Cosmic Voyage, and I started to practice them, and I modified them. I said, well, wait a minute, you know, I'm hearing this dream voice thing. I had this guy named Joe Mason. His website's greatdreams.com. Tell me about this dream voice that he was getting and the awesome effects that he got from it. And I found out that, sure enough, I could listen to this voice in the morning when I was first waking up and I could still remember my dream, I have to really meditate. And the whole point is do not analyze it and do not have emotional reactions to it. Just let it flow through you. Listen to it. If it sounds crazy, if it sounds like it's a nonsense sentence fragment, that's wonderful. Write it down exactly the way you hear it. Or what's actually better in the long run is dictating it into a tape recorder or now like a digital recorder. Like you, everybody has one on their phone. You just use your own phone. That's all you have to do. So I started to do this and I started to get prophetic messages, but that was after I had already been writing my dreams down since 1992, so four years, almost four years, okay? What are you laughing about? There's like so many like sex bot channels on here. Sex bot channels. Uh -huh. You are looking for porn while I'm doing no, my no, show? No, 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 I'm like deleting so many. Oh, there's, we're like, getting spammed by people who are trying to... Yeah. Yeah, okay, well, and thanks a like lot. That's deep that state. I, yeah, they're all over the place. Well, you can't do anything about that. No, that's I'm just, that's them. the loyal opposition. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're like fishing. Yep. Look, guys, this is true. This stuff is real. I'm not making this stuff up. Um, these people really do exist, and they have an enormous amount of cyber trolls that they pay to do their bidding. And so there's apparently a lot of dirty stuff that they're trying to put on my feed, whatever. No, it's just these people who are like fishing. Okay, well. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. I hope you are getting something out of this because we're getting to the really good stuff now. And I wanted to do this even though I can't do all of it, and we'll figure out how to get our slides working, hopefully by next time. Um, we'll, I'll do some tests and figure out why that didn't work. But anyway, um, okay. So, I've been writing my dreams down every morning since 1992. And I've never actually told people how they work. I've never actually told people what is the language of dreams, how do you analyze them, how do you understand them, and how do you apply it to yourself? How do you use that guidance? And that's what my book is going to be talking about, the book that's coming out hopefully on June the 2nd, Awakening in the Dream. So I can't do it all right now. I, am, I do have a class coming up, and one of the things, one of the main things I'm going to be focusing on in this class, it is an online class, is clear communication. Clear communication meaning how do you get access to your higher self, get clear messages that are true and verifiable using the same sorts of principles as remote viewing where your conscious mind can't mess with it. Beth, shh, it's, it's distracting, sorry. Um, she's laughing at all the porno that you guys are putting on my feed, I guess. <laughs> okay. okay, well, you can read them, but just don't laugh out loud. Okay, you can't read it. <laughs> yeah, it's fast. Okay, I get that. I'm trying to get through this. And how long have we been on? How long have we been doing this? Oh, two, hours. two hours. Okay, so we got to wrap it up fairly soon. Minutes. Two hours and 37 minutes. It's pretty, I don't want to go a whole lot longer than this, but I got to get through this stuff. So we'll do that. Okay. 
your dreams have messages in them. I'm going to be doing a class online. We did it last year. We called it Ascension Mystery School. This year we're going to call it The Great Awakening. Uh, we do need your help. It is important that we not run out of money, that we not stop doing business. We can't let the economy destroy us. And as long as we can still exchange money, we should be doing that. We should participate in society. We should buy things, and that includes things for your spiritual fulfillment. So this is something that you can buy if you want to. It's going to be huge. We're doing seven weeks this time. Elizabeth's going to do a lot more. I'm going to have lots and lots of slides, lots and lots of content. It's going to be totally amazing. I'm really excited about it. And uh, let's just be clear that I will be giving you all tools that you can use. It's not just for people who pay for it. I'm doing that right now. And I want to get you the most important stuff. But that kind of teaching is very intricate, takes a long time to explain, and it's very valuable. Not everybody is going to be able to do it, uh, but there, you certainly can practice this just like learning to play piano. So Project Looking Glass was an effort apparently from 10 or 11,000 years ago, the so-called Atlantean civilization, where someone, whoever it was, reverse engineered the pineal gland in the brain. The pineal gland is this area of retinal tissue. It's a, let's go back to the tight shot. This area of retinal tissue uh, that is, it's got water inside of it and the retinal tissue is pointed at the water. It turns out that DMT crystals, if you smash them with a hammer, they're piezochromatic, meaning they give off colored light. And depending on each time you hit it with a hammer, you're going to get different colored light flashes. So these little crystals, they can vibrate and release photons in a full color spectrum, and you have them inside your pineal gland. So that's how you're seeing what your soul wants to see. There's a silver cord from your pineal gland to your astral body. You're looking at things with your astral body. That's what remote viewers are doing. We all have it. It goes through the silver cord, which is like a little stargate, into your pineal gland. It vibrates the DMT crystals that everybody has. And then they release colored photons that show what you're seeing. And then the retinal cells in there are actually wired into the visual cortex of the brain. So you're seeing visual images in your mind's eye when you close your eyes, wherever your soul is going. If you tune into that, you can hear it and you can see it. And there's an energetic component to the hearing as well. All, all part of the pineal gland. So... What they did is they took a big barrel of water and they were able to use, it had to be corpse dust actually, certain types of extraterrestrial beings. They took the corpses of these beings, ground up the dust, put it in the water. I know it sounds silly, but this is the kind of stuff you hear because apparently those bodies had a lot more of these types of crystals in them that were so energetic. I guess DMT. That's really crazy, right? You get high on alien corpse dust. Now, how did you know that was going to happen in this talk? <laughs> anyway. The barrel of water has these electromagnetic rings that flow around it because the pineal gland, when you start meditating, they've analyzed this in these secret programs. There's these very fast electromagnetic ring-like currents that go around and ultimately create a Faraday cage where it shields off all the electromagnetic radio frequencies from inside your pineal gland. And once that happens, now you can see into the other side. If you do this mechanically, this orb of light appears around the actual barrel of water, and then if a person walks up to this thing, whatever you're seeing in your psychic sight will be visible inside this big round area. It has a fisheye lens distortion around the edges. It's yellowish, okay? But you can actually see it. So that's pretty wild because... They have this technology, they've had it for a long time in the classified world, and they can look into the future. So the deep state, the cabal, the Illuminati, they've been using this for many, many years to outfox their enemies. They always know what their enemy's going to do. They're waiting with an ambush. They kill people before those people even knew they were going to be heroes. They've used this for a long time. The Alliance has stolen that technology back, and now apparently they were using it. So they are telling us, as of November 11th, they seem to be telling us that they had Project Looking Glass or something equivalent to it. Could have been remote viewers. I don't know. But it says, oh, hi, doggy. She just... <laughs> yeah, you can pet her. 
I'm not going to pet her. I got work to do. <laughs> anyway, um, David, you should pet your dog. You should pet your dog. We're probably going to get comments like that. I'm trying to focus on my job, okay? I'm just trying to do the, the show. She'll get lots of attention later. No, we got plenty of time before sunset. And there's nobody out there anyway, right? It's no cars, just a few people walking their dog. It's actually really interesting. It's a very, very interesting time. So, 3585, Q post says, project looking glass going forward in order to look back. Let's presume, for the sake of a philosophical argument, that they do have a time viewing technology. They can see into the future. Did they know that the deep state was going to release something like this? And is that why they started this defense operation in Europe involving a total of 37,000 troops from 18 countries back in January? Did they know that America was about to shut down, which is why they sent everybody, all the rest of the 20,000 troops out there, at a little bit after March 3rd? It's happening right now. These guys are out there right now. They've got 3,000 pieces of war material, jets, tanks, okay? Something's going on. If you don't get it, if you only think this is the end of the world, you're not really hearing what Q has been saying. So let's assume, for the sake of a philosophical argument, that they have the ability to look into the future. They know that we're going to be okay. A lot of people are saying this is what they were talking about when they said the storm, or it became what they were talking about, that there would be something chaotic, something crazy. And I've been telling you all this time, you got to have that stored food and water. I told you you needed rice and beans, bottled water, I've been saying this for a long, long, long time. We have tons of it. We're good for six months here. It's great. So, well, that's really unprofessional. <laughs> the dog is here. Okay, the dog is here, everybody. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Come here, girly. I'm going to pet the dog on camera. Live, live dog petting. There we go. We just squeezed a big zit on her back the other day, all this. But she's good now. Good girly. Good girly. All right. It's really good to have a, a very dangerous dog that wants to protect you. I'll just say that. In light of everything that we've got going on, it's a very good thing to have. She showed up at my house back in 2013, and I've had her ever since. So anyway... Project Looking Glass, going forward in order to look back. I believe that this is true. I believe they have this technology. They, they saw this was going to happen. They didn't probably see exactly how it was released. They couldn't necessarily stop it, but they were able to predict what was going to happen and be in position for this and ready to go. So here's the thing. Between August 1st and November 2nd, 2019, there was a huge gap in the Q posts where they didn't say anything for like a long time, that whole chunk of time. And now, as you probably know if you study Q, it's really, really weird because we're now into what? It's been March 9th, and now it's March 19th, so it's 10 days. Q hasn't said a freaking wor word, not a word, as supposedly we're America's circling the bowl. Oh my God, we're going over the cliff. Oh my God, we're all gonna die. They haven't said a word. What are they doing? They're telling you, go back and look at what we said before. We know what's going on. We don't need to say more. The last thing they said on March 9th is God wins. Let's presume that they did have this technology. They knew this was going to happen. If somebody, Here's another big, big thing. Okay, and Let's go over to this shot now. If they made this virus, then they can kill the virus with an antidote that they probably already manufactured, folks. They could kill the virus with an antidote that they've already manufactured. And don't you think if they found the 23 vials of COVID-19 in her sock drawer, that somewhere, either whether they found it yet or not, I don't know, because I don't, haven't had a briefing on this, somewhere there's an antidote, a vaccine. And then we also found out from one of my insiders that quinone, of all things, a 50-year-old vaccine for polio, apparently really, really works wonders on this virus. So we might get out of this a lot faster than we think. They might already have something that shuts it off that they could just give you. 
you know, they might even, I don't know. I mean, people would probably be freaked out about spraying because, oh my God, it's chemtrails. But like, you know, if, if, if you've done your inside time and if you're in the, in the demographic where you're the most at risk and the vi vaccine comes out, you know, I wouldn't want to take a vaccine unless I knew that we really were in the post mass arrest world and they've told us all this and they've revealed what these people are and what's going on. But I believe that's about to happen. I really do think we're in a game changer here. Big, big, big game changer. So let's say they have looking glass. Let's say they're using that technology and that we are about to have freedom. That would explain why they haven't said a frickin' word since March the 9th. Not a word. What the hell are you guys doing? Well, they know what they're doing. They sent, they got 37,000 troops in Europe with all these tanks and, and bombers and they're going and getting these guys while everybody's at home, just like I told you was gonna happen. All right? Here's the next one. This, this statement from Q, public understanding of events is just around the corner. That's the first, th that's the last thing they said on October 1st, 2019, post 3569. And then they had 3570, the month of August is traditionally very hot. You have more than you know, meaning we've given you a lot more than you understand. And then they come back on November the 2nd. November 11th, 2019, they said, be ready patriots. Do you believe in coincidences? This is the calm before the storm. Well, it's not a coincidence. They have a technology. It's an alien technology. It's classified, but they can see the future. They've had this for a long time. They knew this was going to happen. They couldn't necessarily stop it because if they did, they would have. But the problem is we're in this and we can get out of it. It's not going to kill more than 1% of the population of the planet and probably a lot less, honestly. And they're not going to leave society shut down while everybody starts dying to save 1% of people. It's ridiculous. You got to think about this. November 11th, 2019 is also when we found out a very interesting thing in post 3579 when they said route DOD 11.11.18 America will be unified again future proves past America will be unified again future proves past on the same day they talked about looking glass again suggest they're using this technology but DOD 11.11.18 if you know what that means that is the IP address for the Department of Defense server and it turns out that the QAnon board, which is now called 8 Kuhn instead of 8 Chan, is being kept on the Department of Defense's own server. We learned this on November 11th, 2018. Same day they told us about Looking Glass. Which is crazy, because how could this be a kid in his basement if it's on the frickin' DOD server? They backed it up because it's a critical infrastructure. They needed to have this so they could communicate with us. Okay? So... Next thing. Oh, and some of the IP addresses, for example, the IP addresses are 11.11.18.0 to 11.11.18.255. That whole thing is the DOD Network Information Center, and that's where you can look up 8 Kuhn, which is where QAnon is, and it's literally on that server, okay? Next thing. November 13th, 2019, they say nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing. And again, they say coincidence. And they say, okay, uh, what do all these people have in common? Pelosi's son, Kerry's son, that would be uh, John Kerry, Mitt Romney's son, Joe Biden's son, hint, geolocation, Ukraine, hint, energy. Coincidence. When George Soros, GS, calls, D's, Democrats, always answer. Apparently, there's a lot more than Hunter Biden who's been bribed in huge amounts by a corrupt aspect of the Ukrainian uh, country. I don't think the whole country is bad, of course, but I think there could be some bad actors in that country, and we're going to learn about this. But Ukraine needs defense. They actually are, are weak in their air support. I'm personally aware of this for various reasons, so they need to have the ability to defend themselves, especially with threats from countries like China. So, anyway, uh, nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing. They're talking about the idea that these people have been bribed, that their, their kids have been bribed in the billions of dollars, apparently. It's really, really intense. We're going to learn about this. Now, November 16th, 2019, they say, 
The harvest will soon be delivered to the public for consumption. Wow. $35.99. The harvest crop has been prepared and soon will be delivered to the public for consumption. A higher loyalty. Why? I don't know what that means exactly. Hunters become the hunted. Treason. Sedition. How do you remove a liability? Six o'clock can be dangerous. Family proud, and the family, of course, is the, the cabal. The harvest has been prepared and soon will be delivered to the public for consumption. That does not sound like they think the world is going to end. But it also suggests they knew there would be a threat to the food supply. Now that they, we know they had looking glass, and we talked about the fact you need to have a food supply in your house. But again, there's going to be, everybody's going to be able to be okay. They're keeping the critical infrastructure going. I went to the grocery store myself, and there is stuff there. So like, if it's tough for you, you know, there will be resources available. I'm sure of this. There's all this stuff, the contingency plans, National Guard. You know, you might have to get rationed for a while if you didn't do the prepping like I told you to do. But they will make sure that you're fed. Everybody will be able to get what they need, okay? November 19th, 2019, there is no step five, end. That's post number 3606. There is no step five, it's the end. Meaning this is the end. They know that the game is over and they know what they're gonna do. There's no next phase we gotta go through. There's a final thing that's getting ready to happen here. November 23rd, 2019, this now becomes incredibly prophetic in which they said, it's going to be biblical. This is post 3624, and then they say the Great Awakening, November 23rd. After they told you they have looking glass, it's going to be biblical. Hmm. Wouldn't a plague be considered biblical? Wouldn't a virus going around the world, a pandemic where everybody thinks they're going to die, wouldn't that be biblical? What about Australia? 21% of Australia burning in these fires. What about them using their rain-making technology to ra rain huge amounts of rain on these deserts in, in Africa, generating a gigantic number of locusts, which are now swarming and eating entire crops of food all over Africa, sometimes killing a crop in like an hour or less. Okay? This is a manufactured fake Armageddon. That's what I think it is. I don't think everybody's going to die. But they're doing their best to try to take us all out. And that sucks. And that's why we have to fight back. We have to be strong. We have to be tough. We cannot fall prey to fear. And we need to do what we can for each other and, and hold true to this and do the social distancing. Stay at home right now, just like we told you you'd have to do. If you were listening to me, you're all prepared. December 2nd, 2019. Be ready. Public awakening is coming. That's pretty direct. Be ready, Anons. Public awakening coming. That's post number 3645. They know something's about to happen. And again, this is just one month before they started to deploy all those troops out to Europe in advance of this thing that's going on now. December 7th, 2019, panic is real. Now that could be construed in more than one way. That could be construed as that they knew we would go through this big panic. It says in 3658, where is George Soros? Ukraine? Who else recently traveled to Ukraine? Panic is real, all hands on deck. And then they used the Merriam-Webster dictionary definition of evil. They give a link to it. So George Soros is evil. There's your, there's your hint. All hands on deck, meaning jump in. Now's the time. This is not a drill. The panic is real. December 19th, 2019, they say national presidential alert system. Why was this created and tested? Political warfare, information warfare, post 3705. National presidential alert system. That is what happens on your phone when it rings and there's an emergency. It's the emergency broadcast system, but it's now on a cell phone. They've tested this and found out this is the best way to communicate information to the public. One of the things we've been hearing all along since the beginning of Q, and before actually, is that these announcements would come in so that they're, at a certain point they're going to tell you what's going on, they're going to bypass the media, do it through your phone, tell you to remain calm, and that this situation is being taken care of and there will be briefings and updates that the deep state cannot interfere with. As of December 17th, they're still saying they might use that, so make sure your phone is on, make sure it stays charged, and uh, get ready for that. That's probably going to happen. December 19th, 2019, mass popular awakening. Okay? 
It says in 3717, the first indictment once unsealed will trigger a mass pop awakening, popular awakening. The first arrest will verify action and confirm future direction. They will fight, but you are ready. Marker 9. They will fight. This is the fight. They're really trying to, they're really trying to damage the planet. Could very well be an intentional thing. But you got those troops in Europe. They're getting this job done for you, for me, for everyone. Save the planet. International effort. Morning Star doesn't like it, okay? We don't care what they think. I don't care what they think. Maybe you do. I don't care. If these tanks are polluting the atmosphere, we'll let that go for now. <laughs> they will fight, but you are ready. December 19th, 2019. This is going to get crazier and crazier, folks. The enormity of what is coming will shock the world. They said that. They said that. Do you think maybe they know what's going on now? They said that. The enormity of what is coming will shock the world. December 19th, 2019. And I'll read you a little bit more from this. Well, okay, so they're talking about the end of the impeachment debacle, which happened around that time. It says, POTUS was not harmed in any way today other than on paper in the history books. Sometimes you must sacrifice yourself for the greater good. It's talking about him. The enormity of what is coming will shock the world. This is post 3728, December 19th. Pray. How did they know? Well, again, looking glass. We've had many briefings on this. It goes back to Bob Lazar was talking about it way back in the day. Lots of insiders have told me about looking glass. It's a normal thing. Time can be viewed into the future. December 19th, 2019. Something big is coming. Well, the enormity of what it is is going to shock the world, but then they also said this. Something big is coming. It's very big. 37-39. December 29th, 2019. They said the truth will be told. Do you believe in coincidences? It sure seems like a coincidence, right? How did they know the enormity of what is coming will shock the world, and now here we are? They knew. Maybe they knew, you know, maybe they knew this virus was planned. They couldn't exactly stop it. They had, there was too many people that had it, but they were going to get, get it done and get everybody in their house so this thing doesn't cause any more loss of life than necessary. The truth will be told. January 21st, 2020 is the next one I'm going to read for you. They are not attempting to remove POTUS, President of the United States, from office. Two-thirds of the Senate will vote not to convict. No laws were broken. They are attempting to protect themselves from prosecution and prevent the public from discovering the truth. I don't know about you, whether you're a liberal or a conservative. It doesn't really matter to me. What I'm saying is that this thing affects everybody, and we have all had so much of this infighting, and the media is just constantly dragging us through this impeachment thing. And as soon as Mueller gets over, now they come up with a new one. It's like, well, wait a minute, you know? Hunter Biden getting bribed with one and a half billion dollars when they shoehorned his father in to become president of the United States nominee for the Democrats if he wins, right? That's kind of a big thing. I guess my dog really, really wants to walk, so she's going to park herself, but you can't even see it in the frame, so you wouldn't know that. Anyway, we're almost done. This is good. They are attempting to protect themselves from prosecution. By doing this, Trump couldn't move forward to do the plan he wants to do because everybody is tied up in this thing. And if, it, if, it, if he did it now, it would look like, oh my God, oh my God, it's a fascist coup, it's a takeover. So they had to wait until all this politics stuff was done. January 23rd, 2020, the public will learn the truth. Now this is after they already had started this Defense 20 military operation, this massive, biggest in 25 year military operation with 18 countries involved in Europe with tanks and highly trained special ops force soldiers. A couple of these guys could go in there and do a lot of stuff in one compound, okay? It doesn't take a lot of people. So you got 38,000 of them or whatever it is, 37,000. They could do a lot. I just want to be really clear on this. The public will learn the truth. Truth and facts will prevail. Post 3783. January 23rd, 2020. Slow drip, arrow to flood. A slow drip turns into a flood. Uh, so 3784. And then it says, you know, nothing can stop what is coming. Nothing. Slow drip turns into a flood. Once again, they say that. 
And I could read more, but I'm not going to do it all. So this seems almost absurdly overconfident, but check this out. January 23rd, 2020, they say, what storm, Mr. President, in quotation marks? And the answer is, you'll see, says POTUS, 3785, January 23rd. Something's getting ready to happen. They know this. January 23rd, same day. They say, don't worry, it won't be boring forever. <laughs> That's post 3787. Yeah, it's not boring now. This is very, very not boring. January 31st, 2020, the Great Awakening. It says in post 3815, what happens when the people learn the truth? What happens when people wake up? They will not be able to walk down the street. The Great Awakening. So this is going to happen. They're very confident that this plan is going to work. They say, trust the plan, trust the plan, trust the plan. Please don't think that all this has changed all of a sudden. February 5th, 2020, they say, buckle up. It says in post 3831, do people actually believe that those responsible for an attempted coup of a duly elected sitting U.S. president will go unpunished? Is this the end to our constitutional republic? Is there no equal justice under the law? Is there no accountability? Will they escape unscathed? Buckle up. So something's getting ready to happen, and they have this graphic that says, Panic in D.C. in theaters now. Again, they said it's going to be biblical. The enormity of what will happen will shock the world. Panic in D.C. February 9th, 2020. They only had one word in this post, number 3849, and the word was justice. So they are expecting justice. February 13th, they said in this little graphic, haven't you figured it out yet? It's not about Trump's corruption. It's about making sure you don't find out about their corruption. We've heard plenty about Trump's corruption. Whatever the hell you think that is, whether you agree with it or not, now is not the time to just be like all crazy about Trump. And, oh my God, I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. Be open-minded to the idea that this might be something good. At least let that possibility happen, that they are doing this for us, that they're not discriminating by political orientation. They're literally, there's, I know a lot of these people, there's hundreds of thousands of people in the military, in the intelligence community, at all different levels, working to save us, working to free our planet, okay? Now, this is really amazing. On Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2019, 2020, sorry, Valentine's Day, what is the Valentine that they gave us in QAnon? It says, regarding delayed testimony, allow for the public dissemination of critical facts possible unseals and D-class prior, here, come, here it comes, allow for the public dissemination of critical facts, possible unseals and D-class, which is the declassification of all this data, prior to a world televised sit down. Holy crap. Holy crap. Wow. Sometimes the necessary forum to update the American public is provided by those same people being investigated for dot dot dot. And he doesn't say what they're being investigated for. Release to change strategy, watch what happens next. So the forum to update the American public is provided by the same people being investigated. So what that means, I think, is that they are going to use the media. Because since Trump has, has activated the Stafford Act, which is a national declaration of emergency, he has tons and tons of powers that he can do, thanks to the Patriot Act, among other things, I would assume. And that includes probably the ability to make sure the media can't censor anybody anymore. And apparently what we're hearing is that all these keyword searches that you used to not be able to get on Google are now working. So it's very likely that there are a whole bunch of operatives here in the U.S. and that if it hasn't already happened, it's started to happen, that big tech is not going to be able to censor us anymore, which is one of the reasons why I feel good about doing this now and talking like this openly in a public forum. February 17th, 2020, tongue planted very firmly in cheek if they have the use of the looking glass technology. It's going to be a very hot spring. <laughs> oh my God. Well, yeah, because now we're going through this coronavirus thing. And by that point, they could see it was spreading, right? But this was well before that. They were already predicting this stuff. 3868, February 17th, they said it's going to be a very hot spring slash summer. 
So they, maybe they knew it would last, might last through the summer, but I don't think it's going to be much more than that. February 17th, 2020. This is a very important one. It says nothing else in post 3872 to be blunt game over. Wow. That's a very bold statement. Game over. How did they know it was game over? How did they know that the cabal was finished? How did they know it was a perfect plan? Why do they always say trust the plan? Well, because if you remember, by this point on January 23rd, the Harvard professor who apparently manufactured COVID-19 on a grant from uh, Bill Gates had been arrested and Bill Gates just resigned on March 13th. Game over. We know, think about it. If they actually have a person who was paid by Bill Gates and they show you that she had the viruses, she had these vials of COVID-19 to be released, right? Why would you have that? Well, they probably have a bunch of other evidence that they were using drones and whatever to spray this stuff. And again, apparently the virus has already mutated into something much less damaging than what they had wanted it to be, the bad guys. February 20th, 2020, it says, prepare for the storm. This is post 3880. You have come far, Anans, patriots. You are ready. Prepare for the storm. Some big storm, something they say is going to be biblical, something they say is going to rock the world to its foundations. We're in it now, okay? They talk to you about this. Then they don't say anything at all from February 25th to March the 9th. And then one of the last two posts they said in 3891, nothing can stop what is coming, nothing. And then the last post they wrote, on March the 9th, it says, God wins. And there has been not a word since then for 10 days. And as I'm saying here in the slideshow, Q's silence during this all is lost point for a planet is very noteworthy. So let me close this now. So, okay, another thing I want to point out. Now that I've told you all this stuff, maybe this will be a little bit smoother to say. I've been doing this future prophecy stuff for 27 years. I've got dreams, I've got psychic readings, and there's an incredible body of work that I've already generated, including the fact that before Fukushima, I was getting all these dreams, which I published in an article on my site called Bouncing Back from Hack Attack. The dreams were showing me volcanic eruptions, they were showing me tsunamis, they were showing me big fires, they were show some kind of big disaster was getting ready to happen, and I put it out there in advance. I also, on the day that 9-11 happened, summarized many, many, many pieces of data that were already on my website suggesting this thing was going to happen. And I did it that day. Well, everybody else is freaking out about 9-11. I'm saying, oh, look at this and look at this and look at this. I had all these prophetic dreams. And it was obvious what they were talking about once it happened. So with that being said, I, I always trust my intuition. I have not been told it's the end of the world at all. In fact, what I've been told, I have, I've had about 60 dreams in the last, let's say, two years, where there's this big, big auditorium, and there's all these people in there, and I'm gonna have to go on stage, and it's the last minute, and I gotta get ready, and I'm not prepared. And look at what just happened. I'm doing this now, and I'm not prepared. <laughs> you can say it's crazy, you can laugh if you want to, but when I have 60 different dreams like that, telling me get ready for the big show, and then they're also warning me that I'm gonna be a lot more public after this happens, that's pretty likely. If the things that I'm telling you turn out to be true, that's going to affect my life in a way that's very detrimental in some ways, because when you become that public, you really don't have any privacy at all. I'm going to have to keep social distancing, even if everybody else can do it, unless I feel good and I want to go outside. But it's tough. It's going to be tough. So the dreams are not saying anything is wrong, but I will give you this one. I've had, I had one dream in particular that now seems very, very prophetic. I was driving in a car with Donald Trump. He was the driver, I was in the passenger seat. It was a pickup truck, and we were on this corporate construction site. And there was all this new construction going on. Everything was being built. All this new stuff was getting ready to be built, and it was going to be amazing, beautiful stuff. But it was still in the building phases. Trump and I are walking along, uh, driving along. He's, he's talking to me. We're having a good conversation. He's, he's being really very fatherly and very, uh, very nice. And um, we were really getting along well. And then he said, uh, now I need you to hang on. I need you to buckle up because this is going to seem really crazy what's about to happen. What are you talking about? Just, just hang on. Just hang on. 
The next thing I know, Trump literally drives us off of a cliff. There's like a drop off. It's just a straight drop. He drives into the air and we're falling through the air in this pickup truck. And I am freaking the F out about this as the, as the car is dropping. I, I think, oh my God, this guy just killed me. What the hell is going on? I don't care if he's the president of the United States. We're going to die, right? This is crazy. All of a sudden, after falling for what was really a pretty short period of time, we land and I find out that Trump and his people had prepared this whole area for us to land on, have a soft landing, okay? We land on all these boxes and bags of garbage and the, and the car just, there's this big slam as we hit the ground and then we're fine and, and he turns to me and he, and he smiles and he says, now that wasn't too bad, was it? And I said, well, it's pretty freaking scary. But we're okay, right? I said, well, yeah, yeah, we're okay. I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to do that again. Well, we're not going to have to do it again. That was it. Okay. So now in hindsight, I really do believe that dream was talking about what we're dealing with now. Uh, when I was in Japan, I was driving with this guy, Mr. Noda, and I had a voice in my head, very clear. It doesn't usually happen like this, but it was as if someone was talking. And it said, open up your eyes and look at Mr. Noda right now. We're driving down the road. He was driving 14 hours a day, very high speed, like 90 miles an hour on the highways. He was taking me all over Japan. Open up your eyes and look at Mr. Noda right now. And I wouldn't listen. And I kept my eyes closed. And then it screamed, open up your eyes and look at Mr. Noda right now, like that. I open up my eyes and I look over at the driver of the car. They were closed. And his eyes go fluttering like this and his head drops back, and I go, dude, dude, wake up, wake up. And that's the only reason why I'm alive, is that that happened. And so I've had a lot of those kind of things. I've had a lot of those kind of things, these prophetic future glimpses. So I have not been told this is the end of the world, and I hope you're starting to see if they got the people that manufactured this thing, if they're going to tell us that, if they're doing the arrests, and again, the prophecy is already smelling pretty good, right? It's, it's smelling real. It's smelling true. I told you there was going to be mass arrests. I told you you needed to have food in your house. I told you that you weren't going to be able to go outside for a while. I told you you should have two weeks to a month of food and water. And look at where we are. So I don't think this is going to drag on for too long. I will be with you. We're going to keep doing more briefings like this. There's a hell of a lot more information that I didn't get through that's in the slideshow, and I will figure out how to get this darn thing to run. Uh, I spent all of my time trying to put these slides together before our show, and then we finally just said, let's just pick a time. We got to get this done, because everybody's asking me to make a statement, and I wanted it to be good, because I know I might only get one chance. This whole channel might get taken down. So if that happens, I'm going to go to Twitter Periscope or something else. We'll just keep doing it however we have to do it. I'll even go to BitChute if I have to, okay? But we'll get it done. It might not be able to be live anymore, but Twitter, hopefully they won't take that away from me, even if this somehow offends people and gets, gets me taken down. I lose my channel. That's okay right now. I really don't want them to do that, but if it happens, this was worth it because I needed you to hear this. So again, uh, I am David Wilcock here, and uh, we are very proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your progress. I'm proud of your spiritual development. I've seen how you guys are changing. I've seen how your heart is opening. I've seen how you're becoming kinder and more compassionate. And I honor you for that and I love you for that. I love you for your dedication to your own evolution, to working hard on yourself, to eating the right way, to exercising, to getting enough sleep, to taking the right nutrition into your body, to being kind, to being compassionate, to loving each other. I really do respect that, and I see the change. I see how you are becoming a more noble and enlightened and positive and loving person. And I like to think of myself sort of like Neo, more like actually, you're, you're Neo. I'm actually more like Morpheus in the movie The Matrix, if it was a positive thing, okay? The inspirational part of that. We are all having a function. What was one of the things I told you? Do you remember what I kept saying to you? Do you remember that I kept saying? your friends and family are not going to want to get out of bed. They're going to be so depressed and miserable and traumatized, they're not going to want to get out of bed. This prophecy came true. That's what we're in. 
you can reach out to people. You can give them a message of hope, positivity. Hopefully, will be a lot tighter the next time we do this. It'll be more streamlined. I'll go over some of this stuff again. We'll have a new slideshow. Hopefully, the slides will work. But I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being here with me. We are going to do this class, Great Awakening. Um, I believe that the link is going to be in the video description. It's going to be greatawakening.entrepages.net, I believe. O-N-T-R-A-P-A-G-E-S. It may be up by Sunday. We don't have it up right now. Anyway, uh, there is an opt-in page. There, there's ways to get in there. But for right now, just know we are going to launch this class. We do have a critical need for funds, as I'm sure many people do. Uh, so if you can help us out that way, that would be really, really great. Okay? And again, I want to bless you and thank you for your support. And I want you to know that I've been working full time trying to get this message out to you. And I really appreciate your support. I'm David Wilcock, I want to thank you for watching. And now I'm going to come over and turn off the slideshow. So thank you and bless you. This is not the end of the world. I, I really do believe that. And there's so much more we can talk about in the next video of all the layers of proof. I think Q knows what they're talking about. I think these troops are getting it done out there in, in uh, Europe. Let's bless them for a minute. Let's bless their efforts. Let's surround them in light. If, if you know, and some of these people are going to die doing this and they're brave soldiers, we thank you for your service. We thank you. You are not alone. You are not in silence. We know you exist. We know this is real. We thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate you. We appreciate your service. We appreciate you. We honor you and your sacrifice. And we honor the President of the United States. And we honor the Alliance. We honor the positive aspects of the military and the intelligence community. They are doing this for us. I do believe that is true. I haven't agreed with everything that's happened. You probably haven't either. But we need to work together now. It's not a time to fight and bicker and argue. Let's try to see the silver lining in this thing. Because if this is true, on the other side of this thing, we get the truth, we get the big sit down, we get told what's really going to happen. QAnon quote 2700 says, this is going to come out, we're going to tell everybody everything. It's going to be very traumatizing, but people will be so happy that we're not dying from this virus. I think it's going to be a big relief, honest to God. We're going to get disclosure. It might not happen immediately. You might laugh at me for a while, but they've been lining up that UFO card for a long time. I think that's going to happen. We're going to find out about extraterrestrials. We're going to find out about technology that they have. And the technology probably will be released. So there's a lot of cool stuff getting ready to happen. I do believe that. That's what my dreams are saying. They've been right for 27 years. I get them every morning. I know how the language works. I'm not worried. I'm not nervous. I might seem to be too confident for you. Why isn't David more afraid? Why isn't David freaking out? Because I know what's going on. I feel like I know what's going on. I feel very confident. There's intel from trusted sources that converges with things you can read in the news. And then we have the intuitive component, that dream where I'm in the car with Trump and he says, buckle up, and we drive off the cliff and we have a soft landing. And he smiles at me and I'm like, I don't ever want to do that again. Well, you won't have to. This was the only one. Okay, great. All right, with that said, thank you again. Don't forget to sign up for Great Awakening when it comes out. And I want to thank you for your support. I'm David Wilcock. Signing off for now, and again, let's honor all those soldiers that are doing this work to free us and surround them in light and love, and let's pray that their mission succeeds. There's way too much intel for me not to think this is true. I know it's true because I've met people that are in it. Thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you next time. All right.